a stream to Twitch and it just goes, and in fact, it's already live. But when I say stream to YouTube, it goes, are you sure? I love how I say stream to Twitch <laughs> and just go. And of course, I've got to meet my audio. Hey, we're live. What's up, everyone? What's going on? <clears throat> it's, it's, it's. All right. Welcome to episode 30 of Talking Heads. I'm Jeff. I'm Rhett. What's up, everyone? Oh, man, I am feeling good. What up, nice Bryce? Well, at least way better than I was last week. Uh, and the week before. And the week before. <laughs> you're looking pretty good. Thank you. I think Thank it's you. because of all the drugs that you just consumed over there. You're like, I have to get it up for YouTube. Yeah. Let's do this show! <laughs> <laughs> no, Zerus, I have been sick for about three weeks, and I am almost over it. Like, I've, I've still got just this little tickle in my throat, although yesterday it was like I was swallowing glass. So I'm Ooh. I'm on the downhill Ooh. side. I am so much better. I can actually talk today. Um, I can actually read the monitors. I can drive. I can do all the things that I used to enjoy doing. So thank you, everyone, for thinking of me this past week. I do appreciate it. Uh, I am so much better today. Good. Red, how are you doing? I'm I'm doing well. I'm doing great compared to recent weeks. Yeah. Uh, we were just talking <laughs> off the air because Jeff's been really sick. Um, literally less than a week after my last appearance on the show, I went off and fractured some ribs and got a concussion and uh, back on my feet today. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I can laugh without it being painful. Although if I laugh too much tonight, I might wake up tomorrow a little sore. Right, so. right. Got to rein it in. I'm going to be the laugh police tonight. <laughs> Yeah, so not only did you move your house, you then went to work the very right, next yeah. day and broke your rib. Right, yeah. So <laughs> we uh, we recorded, well, we did the live show on mm -hmm. Wednesday. Yep. Saturday morning, woke up bright and early, moved my house in one day. But anybody who knows me knows that that's not quite a feat because I lived in 400 square feet. So it was like tiny house. But yep. moved it all in one day. And then the next day I went to work. And it was a debate, too. I recorded my podcast, and I was, like, yeah. asking the person I was interviewing. I was like, should I go to work or should I not go to work? Like, yeah. Go to work, buddy. Just go to work. Yeah, within two hours of being you at work, this. broke my ribs. Yeah, you got this. <laughs> Had to go to the urgent care. And they're like, man, you <laughs> hit your head pretty hard. Yeah. I'm like, okay, but why can't I breathe? And they're like, let's do some x-rays. Oh, yeah, you're screwed. Here's some drugs. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, can you guys do anything? They're like, no. <laughs> yeah. They're just like, lay in bed and be miserable. Broken ribs? Uh, here, take three of these, and if that doesn't work, take two more. Well, the first time I went in, they didn't even prescribe me anything. Wow, really? They're just like, go home, relax. I was like, okay. Really? Yeah, two shots of scotch and yeah. laid in bed and watched all the Netflix <laughs> movies that I've been missing out on. Nice. And then to boot, so I fractured my ribs. Then my wife, uh, a couple days later, went and got wisdom teeth surgery. Ooh. So we were both just bedridden for a whole weekend. Wow. It was It was the weirdest first week in a house ever. That is miserable. <laughs> but things are looking up. Nice. Yeah, I, I will say... Uh, um, when I had my wisdom teeth out, it was kind of kind of a weird experience because uh, my my wife drove me to to the dentist and and whatnot. And I'm always a smart ass, right? But uh, I I had these things planned that I wanted to say while I was on the medicine. And I actually <laughs> got them out, which was really funny. But I I, I remember uh, I remember waking up and and they and they sit me up and I look down and I don't have a shirt on and I close my eyes and I open my eyes and now I have a shirt on. <laughs> it's like I'm magic. Look at that and. Uh, um, and the, the nurse walks over and she's getting me into the wheelchair and, and whatnot and, uh, and she's wheeling me out. No, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing just fine. You know, th thanks for asking. And, uh, Hey, can you come home with us? <laughs> <laughs> the only time you can ask and that the, without uh, yeah, getting smacked ex exactly. upside the head. And I knew I could get away with it. So I did it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we get out to the car and I look up at the nurse and just deadpan us. I, I said, uh, Hey honey, you want to open the door so I can drive? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, the, no. and the nurse kind of goes, and she and my wife goes, he's kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good save, Megan. That's right. <laughs> All right. What are we drinking tonight? Well, we got a couple of options. Um, I mentioned to my old man once that I really wanted to try Zoigel House. Mm -hmm. He went without me, and now it's his like favorite place to go, and he yeah. loves bringing back beers for me to sample. So we got two different Zoigel House. We got the Kolsch. Nice. We got the Pilsner. And then Jeff over here was just tapping into my my third eye or something I don't know, and he brought back some of this blood orange wheat beer from Kells, which uh, I'm looking forward to trying. I love Kells. I've yep. not had this particular one, so yep. 
yeah, I, I haven't had this one either. I've had to, I've had a couple really good brews from them though. So, uh, but I, I was going through going. I kind of want like a, a Belgian white or, right. or a, a wheat beer. And it's kind of getting to that time of year, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's, it's uh, early spring. Uh, uh, spring in Oregon is absolutely beautiful. Uh, this is when it tricks you to staying through the winter. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, you got the tulip festival. You got yeah. all this stuff going on, and you rem you, you just remember why you live here. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, yeah, for the next week and a half, it's seventy five degrees and sunny, and it's going to be just wonderful. Oh yeah. Time here in the valley, but uh, yeah, I was looking for a Belgian white, and I saw that on the shelf, and I went, "That is speaking to me." Absolutely. So. All right, uh, let's crack one open. I'll get some glasses. Yeah. Um, let's get the show on the yeah. road. Yeah, do you have a preference on what we start? I was kind of thinking the blood orange wheat, honestly. But... I, was, I was thinking the blood orange, too. Okay, good. So, Glad we're on the same page. Let's do that. There you go, my friend. Uh, let me know in the comments, uh, what are you drinking tonight? A bright and slightly tangy American-style wheat ale with zesty but balanced notes of organic blood orange. Wow, that is orangey. Hey, wow. when people say you can't get blood from an orange, they're wrong. Just kidding. <laughs> Dumb joke. <laughs> Dad, is that you? Oh, boy. You're alive? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Here I am to keep things dark. Oh, love that smell. Oh, wow. Whew. That is delightful. Thank and you. when you're letting me know in the comments what you're drinking tonight, remember, please drink responsibly and only drink if you are of age. But if you're not of age, drink root beer, water, Gatorade, I don't care. Absolutely. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. To your health. Yes. Hmm. Little lighter bodied than I was anticipating, but yeah. by the color, you should expect it to be lighter bodied. Yeah. I was just... So clear. Damn though, that is crisp and good. In fact, you got the uh, the camera up there. If you oh, I do. Here, yeah. take a look at that bad boy. Absolutely clear. Doo, doo, doo. Here, let's go. Oh my god. <sighs> <laughs> really, kind of a golden color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little hoppier than you would expect for some reason. Mm -hmm. Damn, that is good. Thank you, Kels. That is really good. Yeah, way very hop, a uh, hop front heavy. Absolutely. Um, but uh, the orange smell on this is just incredible. Yeah, it just hits you right in the nose, yeah. down the throat. Then, yeah, you get the floral. Mm -hmm. It kind of tastes from the hops. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like spring in a can. Yeah. <laughs> Whew. Is that mm. Cascade hops, does it say? It doesn't say. It uh, tastes like Cascade hops. Well, it's brewed in Oregon, it's, so... It, yeah, it's a Portland, like, Oregon brewery. What Oregon brewer doesn't use Cascade <laughs> hops? Or yeah. Centennials, I guess, which yeah. I think are also Northwest hops. Correct me if I'm wrong uh, in the they're comments. They're Washington hops, I believe. Well, good, good enough. If I remember correctly. Oh. Someone will correct me. Ugh. None yeah. of that yeah, they're crap asking, hop they're, from other places. They're asking when we're going to start selling uh, canned air. <laughs> <laughs> Little Perrier. Hey, by the way, somebody in the comments was saying that they had a black screen, so hopefully that got sorted out. Yeah, um, uh, I've, I've got both the streams up here, and I can see we're, we're live and we're feeding, so... <clears throat> eh. uh, you're 21 and you can't stand beer. Is this normal? Will I magically enjoy beer once I'm 25? Yeah. That's actually pretty much how it happened for me. Um, I, I've talked about this on the show before. Um, I hated beer between the ages of 18 and 25 because I worked. I used to work in grocery, mm. and so I'd have to go and clean the bottle return machine. Right, we, we talked we about this last time. We have the deposits here, and so people bring their their bottles back, and they get 10 cents back for bottle. Yeah, and uh, uh, the the rotting smell of domestic beer will never leave me. Oh, it's horrible. It is horrible. Yeah. But uh, but once I turned 25, I started getting into craft beer, and and you get much more of the taste, a lot more flavor. Right. Um, and, uh, and I don't have to smell Budweiser or see, anything like that. Not to rat you out too much, but yeah. see, I'm a little younger than Jeff. Uh -huh. So by the time I came of drinking age, like the craft beer movement was like already in full swing. Yeah. Already just like kicking you in the face. Yeah. Uh, I didn't drink at all until I was 21. And neither did I. And I tried... Good move. That's right. I, uh, I tried very hard to like beer. And I remember one time working with my old man uh, and his beer choice was Rainier. Still is. So I go to the bar <laughs> with him and I drink Rainier too. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he, uh, of course, though, he did pick up these Oigel houses for me. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he, one time we were working, we we're painting houses or something like that. And he came back with a full rack 
of Rainier, and it was all he came back with at, for lunch. No. Nah. And I was like, there was no water or anything, and yeah. I was like, what do I do? So I drank that, and it was... I remember just thinking it was so bad yeah. and like having to just swallow it down the best I could do. Yeah. And I fought through it and I still hated regular beer until like a year later and it just grows on you, man. I mean, yeah. it's like, it's like coffee or it's like tea or it's anything that's like an acquired taste. That's what it means. Like you have to try, yes. you know? Yeah. It, it'll grow on you. Um, I, I started with a lot of uh, whiskeys and scotches and things like yeah. that. And even scotch I had to grow into. Right. I, all of it you do. <laughs> See, and I remember like being in high school and everybody's mm -hmm. drinking liquor, right? Yeah. And you're like, I guess there's something to this. I didn't know that they're like cutting it into cocktails or whatever, you know? Yeah. So I tried so hard to like liquor straight. And yeah. now I love whiskey neat and scotch, yeah. all this stuff. Totally. that. Uh, meanwhile, mm -hmm. everybody else is like, can I cut this with Coke? It's like, yeah. no, it's an no. 18 year old scotch. That's right. <laughs> All right, let's get to beer news. Speaking of domestics, uh, Budweiser has announced a new patriotic beer based on George Washington's original handwritten recipe. Um, so it's going to be available from April through September, I believe, this year. Um, and uh, it's called uh, the Budweiser Freedom Reserve Red Lager. Um, and it's based off a recipe written down by hand by George Washington. <laughs> Um, has a toasted barley grains with a hint of real molasses, just like Washington instructed. Um, being that this is Budweiser, I doubt it's exactly like George Washington instructed because I'm sure they mess with the quantities to make it, uh, profitable to, right. to make and distribute and whatnot. Cause that's what, what InBev does. But, uh, yeah, uh, I actually might try this cause I, I am kind of curious I'd be what they're gonna do with it. I'd be down to try it too yeah. why not I mean it a recipe penned by George Washington himself yeah. like you'd be silly not to yeah the can there are the bottles are pretty cool they're the old yeah. little stubby bottles I, I'm mo I'm a fan of the stubs since yeah. they re kind of brought those back yeah freedom reserve red lager yep available in stores from May 1st so wait, so it's out today? It's out today. Oh, yep. we made a grievous yep. calculation error in not bringing I, I, this onto the shelf. I didn't see it on the shelf. Um, there's also another beer that's being released. Um, and in fact, we'll jump a little ahead here in the news. Uh, Dos Equis is announcing or introduces a Cinco Equis, which is a, uh, a beer for the uh, uh, Cinco, Cinco de Mayo. Cinco de Mayo. Um, and uh, uh, it's... Uh, let's see. Coincide with the launch of the extra limited Cinco Equis cans. Um, and I don't remember the dates that this was going to be out. Uh, I mean, it said May. No, that's today. It was published. May, it was published like two hours ago. Um, it doesn't say there's no <laughs> dates on here. Yeah. So, uh, oh, available at select establishments in New York and Texas. And eventually eBay at staggering resale prices. So, so we may get it here. We may not get it here. I don't know. I, I'm, I'd be curious to try that one as well. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I've. I mean, as far as like those types of beers go, like Dos Equis makes some good beers. They do. So yeah, yeah. Uh, especially if you're going to a uh, taco truck. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's this here? All right. Next up is a brewery in Milwaukee is uh, partnering with uh, Lakefront Brewery to create a pizza crust that is uh, beer infused. Um, and so uh, the article is that the romance between pizza and beer just got a little more intimate in a collaboration between Milwaukee's Lakefront Brewery and Eau Claire's Ovenworks Pizza. They've created a frozen pie with beer batter in, or beer infused crust. Um, 12 inch pizza costs between $7.99 and $10.99, depending on the toppings you get. Hmm. Um, so it's going to be a distributed, uh, like oven bake frozen pizza. Right. Uh, but with a beer crust in it. Right. So. Interesting. Uh, it seems kind of like a weird thing to yeah. write about. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> okay. Yep. I'll, so, I'd try it. I mean, yeah. it sounds like, you know, people are like... Well, I've, I've had, like, beer battered... Right. Anything. Uh, onion rings and french fries and... Sausages. Uh, uh, cod fish. Right. Beer battered fish. Yeah, Excellent. so pizza's just... I feel like beer-infused 
breads was like already a thing, but it, it is, but uh, nationally distributed, probably not. Okay, so, bring it on. Yeah. Uh, Beer Hall Pizza will be available in select Woodman's Markets in Green Bay, Appleton, Oak Creek, and Waukesha, I believe is how you say that. Hopefully. Yep. Belois and Euclair. Belois and Euclair. Um, if you guys are so near north, those northwest, areas. Northwest or northeast Wisconsin. Perfect. You guys are anywhere in that area. Mm-hmm. Buy some Beer Hall Pizza. Let us know how it tastes. Totally. And we'll talk about it on stream. Hello, guys. Hello. <laughs> uh, liquor makes me sick. Yeah, but a joint is better than beer, but teach their own. Yeah. Like I said, I'm actually more of a cocktail guy. I Absolutely. I, I love my spirits. Um, I'm more into yoga <laughs> and aligning my chakras. Waukesha. Waukesha? Waukesha. Waukesha. Waukesha? I was putting the emphasis on the wrong syllable. That's what I was doing. <laughs> So Waukesha. Absolutely. Thank you. for So Skullfell, I hope yeah. that you, if you're near there, go try some of the pizza and let us know how it tastes. See, now we can try you with some like Northwest names, like Pialup or, uh, or Willamette or Sequoia or Willamette. How about or... just Oregon? Yeah. People never <laughs> say that, right? Like, what was I watching the other day and like the, the main character or whatever? Oh, God, I was watching New Girl on Netflix, you know, the yeah. Zoe Deschanel sitcom. Yeah. And uh, I'm, supposedly I'm her, you're right. I only started <laughs> watching it recently, but... Uh, supposedly Zoe Deschanel's character is from Oregon and she's like, Oregon. I'm like, no, no, you're full of crap. I'm out. <laughs> unwatchable. <laughs> Just get it right. Literally Just unwatchable. Google it. it. It is so frustrating when I watch uh, sports on TV and they're talking about Oregon and whatnot. And, uh, there's always some great moments in, uh, like college football. I'm watching, right. Um, watching a broadcast from Eugene. And, uh, I think it was, uh, gosh, who's the, uh, not Brent Musburger, but one of the other old. Oh, don't look at me. I yeah. don't know. Um, anyway, uh, they 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 pan in on what's basically the Eugene foothills, like Skinner Butte, and uh, and the guy goes, "There they are, folks, the mighty Cascades here in Eugene, Oregon." Ugh. And and I went, "No, so close, <laughs> so close, not even close." It, it's like you can see Mount Hood and the Sisters and and Mount <laughs> Bachelor from the stadium. But no, they zoom in on Skinner's Butte, which is like 1,500 feet, and go, there they are, the mighty Cascades. I mean, to be <laughs> fair, some would argue that it's like the foothills of the mighty Cascades. Right. But, yeah, yeah pan a little further north next time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 behind that. <laughs> All right, and a little bit of a follow-up story here. Um, we... Uh, Posted about uh, Green Flash Brewing basically going out of business, liquidating everything to right. uh, to their debtors. Um, and uh, we had heard that the brand new Virginia Breach Brewery that they had built and not staffed yet. Like, like the brewery is built and ready to rock. And then they went out of business. Um, that brewery was sold to an unknown company. Well, now we know it's actually been sold to New Realm Brewing. Um, and they plan on, as soon as they can get the local licenses, documentation, and whatnot, their liquor license, license to, license to brew, license to distribute, um, they are going to start staffing that brewery, open it up to the public. Great. Um, it's got a beer tasting room. It's got an event house. It, it's a beautiful facility. I mean, that it's the giant, right. giant place. Um, so... Kind of some good news if you're in Virginia Beach that uh, that building's not going to go vacant. It will, in fact, become a brewery. Cool. Um, uh, it is uh, now New Realm is one of the subsidiaries of Miller, so this is technically a big beer right. that has purchased this. Still, um, but uh, but New Realm does get to operate kind of quasi independently. I mean, the, they still have oversight from Miller, but uh, they, they do put out some good beers. Uh, kind of like Lagunita is a is a big beer, but. Puts out good beers. Yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, wait, it's not oregano? No, it's not oregano. It's not Oregon. <laughs> Oregon. It's Oregon. 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 It's not that hard. Just it's, live here for right. two decades. It, when you're saying it, you fall off the, the word. Right. You, you, you don't get into it and go, there's no peaks and valleys. It's Oregon. It, it's You just fall off it. Oregon. Which... People ask me why I do that at the end of my sentences, and I think that's why. It's because I live in Oregon. Right. Uh, all my sentences get quieter as right, the sentence right. goes on. <laughs> now yeah, now my, you're never going to be able to unhear that. My, my favorite, too, is there, <laughs> there was a shirt going around 
I don't know, 10 years ago, I probably saw it. I still see it around, but I, that was the first time I saw it. And it said, it's Willamette, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, I went and saw, um, oh gosh, what's his name? Uh, Nerdist. Um, uh, Chris Hardwick. Chris Hardwick, thank you. I uh, went and saw him. He came to uh, uh, one of the opera houses in uh, in Portland and did a show. Right. And, and I went and did and saw his show. Great. And uh, um, he was talking about going to Voodoo Donuts and whatnot and how Oregonians love their donuts and whatnot. And he's trying to make like a local joke. Right. Which either goes incredibly well or you just bomb it. People usually eat it up regardless because they're like, right. that's where I'm from. Right, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 so, and so he was trying to get that. So he's like talking about going to Voodoo Donuts and someone made him a, a donut from Voodoo that's shaped like a... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> gave him the traditional of course, yeah, two, yeah, two yeah. donuts in the maple bar, put it together. Perfect, perfect. Um, but uh, uh, so he and he goes, you Oregonians love your your donuts. Like if 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 you told me that the best donut in Oregon that I had to like jump in the Willamette River and swim to the bottom and oh. pick the, and and everyone starts going whoa 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 and he goes what I don't give up. I don't care. I don't care what it is. This joke is for you. Accept it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Dude, when did you go see him? Was that a that was uh, that was four years ago? Okay. And I can tell you why I know it's four years ago, is because the show was on my daughter's first birthday. Oh, there you go. Um, so it was uh, January twenty third, two thousand fourteen, um, and uh, and she turned one that day. And so we we kind of went over to the family's house during it was like a Thursday night or right. something like that. And so we went over to <coughs> to her mom. <coughs> excuse me, went over to her mom to uh, her grandma's house for dinner, and then we dropped her off there and we just left. Bye, see you Bye, later. See you later. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, honey. honey. <laughs> I love you. Honest. Chris Hardwick's only in town for one night. Right. <laughs> yeah. The only reason I ask is because I I went and saw we were just talking about Kev Smith a little bit ago. I went yeah. and saw. The live version of his podcast, Jay and Silent Bob Get Old. Oh, yeah. With him and Jay nice. Muse were there and did a whole bit. Oh, my God. It was so funny. It was mm -hmm. so perfect. Yeah, he did a bunch of Oregon bits, too, but it was all about weed because he's like a huge stoner now and all yeah. this stuff. So he's talking about going into dispensaries and how he's like, well, I smoke a lot of weed. And they're like, you haven't smoked this weed. <laughs> and I just face rolled him, apparently. Yeah. And then somebody lost their wallet or, you know, Jay Muse lost his wallet up in the Target near the airport. And they had yeah. to, like, drive all the way back. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I also saw Daniel Tosh a number of years ago. Oh, that'd be um, great. He was actually at the Elsinore, believe it or not. Nice. Yeah. That's where I saw this, at the Elsinore. Oh, really? So it was like Yeah, so down, downtown perfect. Salem, historic Elsinore Theater. And uh, what's funny is Tosh doesn't try to do the local jokes. He he tries to be that pompous prick that doesn't care. Right. Uh, but he lets you know that he doesn't care. Right, right. And uh, and so he, he walked in there, and, and instead of going, oh, this is a beautiful venue, thank you guys for having me. He walked in here and he goes, man, this place is really out of date, don't you think? Honestly, they're going to have to strip it down and, and, and redo this. <laughs> it's going to be a regal movie theater but before we're done with it. Exactly. Oh, God, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Getting into tech news. <laughs> Gosh. Chug your beer, man. It sounds like you need it. I promise I really am better, but there's just this tickle in my throat that's just hitting me in the wrong spot. Yeah. Probably that mm. donut you had. Probably. Yeah. All right, getting into tech news, the news of the week. As far as I'm concerned, there's a couple big stories out there, but uh, this one is is the one that continues to develop. Uh, we talked about, I think, two weeks ago on the show, um, the FTC sending out notice to a number of different companies right. saying, we are reviewing your warranty policies. We are reviewing your documentation on your websites and in your manuals, and we are going to be ensuring that you are abiding by the United States law. Right. Um, the Magnuson-Morrison Act of 1975, which states that um, you are allowed to repair your own devices. You are allowed to take your devices to third parties. You are allowed to hook third party devices up to your device. Right. Um, and none of those actions void your warranty. Um, so there's, there's people who are like, oh, you can't take your video card apart to replace the thermal paste because... That'll void your warranty. No. No, it does not. Um, <coughs> um, the action of inserting a screwdriver into something and taking apart does not void your warranty. What the Magnuson Morrison Act says is that the simple act of taking something apart is allowable by the user. Using third party parts as replacements is allowable by the user. The only way a manufacturer is able to void your warranty is if your attempted repair of the device damaged the device in 
the component that you're submitting a warranty for. So if you say, hey, my motherboard has some bad capacitors on it, or dim slot three doesn't work, they can't go, oh, well, you took the heatsink off the Northbridge chip. Sorry, your warranty is void. Yeah. No, that's not why dim slot three doesn't work. And so they, they could say, oh, we're not going to cover your cooling for the Northbridge chip anymore because right. you've you opened that. But even that's kind of sketchy because as long as you th use thermal paste or a pad on it, that's a like replacement. That's still fine. Right. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, you are allowed to disassemble your parts. You are allowed to source third-party parts or refurbish parts. You're allowed to do it yourself. You're allowed to take it to an unauthorized third-party repair service right. and have them repair it for you. As long as your attempted repair does not damage the device in question in the manner that it broke under warranty, your warranty is still valid. Right. Um, I had a recent run-in with this where, um, <coughs> you know, I, I kind of took over this program and we had some DVRs go bad for CCTV. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, like right on the back of the thing where you take the panel off to get in and remove the hard drives or anything mm -hmm. else like that to get into it. Uh, there's a sticker that says, like, if this is broken, your warranty is void. Yeah, warranty void if removed. So anyway. Warranty void if seal is broken. Yeah, we yeah. open it up just to try and isolate the trouble and see if, like, we're having, you know, because we have a DVR and the uh, hard drives are being written to nonstop 24-7 at this point for, like, five years. Mm. Right? So, like, we just want to make sure, is it a hard drive issue or not? Because if it's something else. So we just swap out the hard drives. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it wasn't a hard drive issue. It was like a motherboard issue or something. So we take it into the people that service our DVRs and they look, took one look at the sticker and they're like, uh, we can't do anything about this. And it's like, yeah. uh, why? And they're like, well, you see the sticker? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You yeah. going to fix it or not? It's still yeah. under warranty. Yeah. And they're like, uh, we can't. We can't. And so <laughs> it's like, okay, yeah. go get your boss. We're going to talk this over because we paid for this warranty. Yeah. And a bunch of people have been getting hammered for the, yep. by this stuff for like over a year. Oh, so. it, it's, been, it's been a decade or so. Yeah. Um, because uh, cell phone manufacturers are especially notorious for this. And, and that's kind of where it started with the Apple starting to fuse things right. uh, to, to their boards. And, and, uh, and, and especially in their laptops, starting to fuse things together in their laptops. Um, specifically talking about the Retina MacBook display, where the screen is now one physical unit. It is literally fused on the outside edge. Uh, the Microsoft Surface, which I've hammered a number of times for the repairability, uh, there is no way to repair a Microsoft Surface without destroying the tablet. Right. Um, they, they are inserviceable. And they're taking an $1,800 laptop and they're making it a disposable tech product after three years. Yeah. You want to replace the battery? Sorry, the battery is literally like super glued into the chassis. Yeah. Um, and and the, the adhesive they use around the screen is like this thick, tar, nasty crap that gets over everything. Um, although I will say I did successfully harvest the screen off a Surface Pro 4 without completely destroying it. I still delaminated the touch sensor mm. from the screen, but I got it away without breaking the glass. Perfect. Which is the first time I've ever done that. Um, but yeah, so the simple act of repairing or opening your device does not void your warranty. Um, and uh, like I said, two weeks ago, we touched on this where we knew the FTC had sent out notice, but we weren't sure what the notices were for. Um, now we know that Microsoft, Nintendo, Sony, HTC, Asus, Hyundai... Um, Apple is not mentioned, but I pretty much guarantee they're on this list. Yeah, they gotta be. <coughs> they're one of the biggest um, freaking... But uh, they, they sent out to six companies right off the bat, and I guess there's like 300 or something like that on the list <sighs> that, that are going to be getting this notice. Good. Uh, the notice went out April 6th. They have 30 days to correct the language in all their documentation. Or they, um, and, and the FTC said there are no, no fines or penalties that are going to be leveled yet, but you are noticed that starting May 6th, we are going to start checking your websites again. And if this documentation is not corrected, you're in trouble. You're going to be in trouble. You're going to face legal fees. You're going Good. to face legal ramifications. Good. So, see, that's the, you know, when this law went into effect, these big, mighty corporations, I think, mm -hmm. scared a lot of the appliance repair people's away. Like, mm -hmm. why don't you see? Remember when TV repair shops were like a thing? It was a thing. That's not a thing anymore. Right. And, and in fact, I went to probably, uh, man, it had to have been eight, nine, ten years ago, um, 
I looked into repairing a flat screen TV for my mom for Mother's Day because I'm broke mm-hmm. and I had a broken TV. And so I thought maybe I could just go into a shop and get the parts I need or talk to somebody who knows what I need. Radio There's Jack. not a damn place. Well, I ended up going to Norvac. Yeah. Okay. Go to Norvac if Norvac's you need excellent. anything. Okay. Yep. The guy was just <laughs> like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no worries. He, like, took one look at the board that I had and he goes, yep. yeah, these caps are bad. Let's get some new ones. Good yep. to go. He sent me with what I needed, told me how to solder them. That was, like, my first you know, uh, voyage into DIY. Yep. Yep. All thanks to Norvac. Norvac Electronics. Uh, they've got a place in Salem and another one up in Tigard by Washington Square. Oh, and perfect. They are fantastic. Yeah. Uh, uh, if you live in Oregon, they're they're one of the only places you can get low level components for for yeah. things anymore. You can't the, do it at Radio Shack anymore. And the guys are amazing there. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember when I was in high school, some people that I went to high school with made a fake commercial. I might have mentioned this last time, so sorry, guys, but they made a fake commercial for Norvac, where they're just like sitting around. And they're like, "Oh yeah, man, we'll fix that later. We'll just go to Radio Shack. They got everything you need." It's like, "What? Radio? No, yeah. Norvac!" And they're like, "Norvac? No, shut up!" And he's like, "Norvac blows Radio Shack out of the effing water!" <laughs> and then they just scream that for like three minutes straight. Yeah, <laughs> and it's true. Yep. <coughs> Uh, how long did it take me to get the, uh, the, or how long did I have to hold the Surface Pro under heat uh, to get the screen off? A really long damn time. <laughs> um, it took me close to an hour to remove that screen uh, with a heat gun. And, yeah. uh, and with about two dozen guitar picks. <laughs> of course. Because you, you lift it up just section by section. Yeah, yeah. So. Nice. Yeah. Excellently done. So yeah, uh, another example of things that aren't allowed. Yeah. Uh, this warranty void if seal is broken under a, or covering a screw, not not technically allowed by law. Yeah. Um, the action to perform if you are in a situation where someone is denying your warranty for this, literally just find a pro bono attorney or just file in small claims court because the defendant will have to show up. And if they don't show up for their court date, uh, you win. They, you automatically win, whatever <laughs> whatever judgment you're asking for. Um, and I, your judgment has to be reasonable. You, you can't go in and go, I demand a million dollars. Why? Well, because you're $30 If it's small video, claims yeah. court, you can't do more than $10,000. Right, exactly. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, I demand $10,000 because my 1050 I pulled the screw out of. And, right. and now MSI won't vo- I'm just saying the and, company name. Yeah. Um, but uh, but now this company won't, won't uh, honor the warranty. You sue them in small claims court, so you get their corporate address and you and you send them a subpoena. Um, if they do not show up to the court date, you win. Yeah. Um, and you know we're not lawyers by any means, but it th- I think it costs like a hundred bucks to mm-hmm. file something in small claims yep. court. And and what you do is you file for your court fees for your lost time, whatever time it took you to file, whatever time you're going to be in court, plus whatever time you were working on the device right. itself. Plus the replacement cost right. of the device you're working on. And if they don't show up, you automatically win, and your fees are automatically paid by mm-hmm. you know by the damages or whatever it would be right. considered. So uh, you know, if enough people start doing this, these yep. big corporations are going to start taking notice. And like I said, <laughs> not a lawyer, but not I a lawyer. feel like a lot of judges would yeah. have a hard time just chucking this out, you yeah. know, especially because it's in the public eye right now. Yeah. Um. But yeah, uh, one of the reasons I've I've bought EVGA for such a long time, uh, just as a hobbyist and enthusiast, is EVGA will explicitly warranty your product with altered BIOS, with water cooling blocks installed. All you have to do is return it to them in original condition. Right. And so they don't care what you've done to the card so long as when they get it back, it has their BIOS and their heatsink on it. Right. They don't care. Uh, when I had my EVGA uh, 1080 for the win card catch fire, which I did a video on, <laughs> Um, it's a good video, by the way. Um, I literally got, wrote an email to EVGA, said, hey, my video card caught fire under these conditions. They said, okay, take the water block off, put the, uh, put our, our, uh, our, uh, cooler back on and mail it in and you're done. Perfect. No questions asked. Not a single question asked. Right. I don't think I've ever bought, if I'm buying new or something from Newegg or whatever, I don't mm-hmm. think I've ever bought not EVGA. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are one of my favorite go-to brands just for their customer service. Absolutely. Um, and, and I'm not being paid to say that. I, I, I not wish, yet anyways. I wish I had fun. <laughs> <laughs> Throw me under the bus. Gosh. <laughs> yeah. I'm well, not a shill yet. <laughs> <laughs> By the time some of you are watching this in the future, yeah. he absolutely is being paid for this. That's so, right. Uh, you know, just full journalistic disclosure here. Yeah. Just kidding. What I'm did, not a fortune teller. What did I say on your podcast? Gilgamesh ride the lightning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. 
<laughs> or taste the lightning. That's what it was. <laughs> I forgot all about that. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, before Rhett was a guest host on my show, I was a guest star on <laughs> Rhett's show. Absolutely. So we got to do that again. That was so much fun, we man. Gotta do that and again. now Taylor's been doing a little bit of light work in yeah. making VR apps and things like yeah. that. So it'd be a, it would be a lot of fun to redo it and maybe revisit some of those other conversations and explore some new That ones, was man. about a year ago. Yeah, it was actually. Yeah. Uh, that was just uh, <laughs> just came up on my memories on Facebook actually. Nice. So, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, I got to notice that. Uh, um, I think two weeks ago, a year prior, I had done my first sale in my VR arcade that I opened. That's right. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was early Square, April, yeah. Or early May that I opened that officially. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, good time. Sorry, we're, we're getting into like personal talk here. Yeah. Um, nah, you're still watching. We got 57 people online. Thank you all good 57 times. of you. Hey, what do you say we open one of these other beers? Yes. I don't mean to like interrupt yes. your important button pressing over here, but... I gotta say, which one do you want? Because I kind of want the Kolsch. All right. It's all yours, man. Sweet. It's all yours. I'll have the pills. Sweet. But you gotta right. open it for me. That's the only stipulation. I will open it. I mean, you know, can't beat a good Kolsch. That's for, that's that's for right. sure. Oh, smart man over here. Look at this. You can't use dirty glass. I was like... Totally prepared to like mix in there with some blood orange and be like, mm, those Germans really know how to mingle with the blood orange. Oh, whoa, whoa, careful. <laughs> Almost had it the first try there. Just kidding. Have you shown that off yet? I have not shown this off Okay. <laughs> Woo! Not a bad little popper. Perfect. Available now on the craft computer. No, not yet. Just kidding. <laughs> so I actually am looking at possibly selling these. A uh, little switchblade bottle opener, and I'm going to uh, laser engrave them. So, if you're interested, let me know in the comments. Absolutely. Um, you, too. Oh, yes. You, too, can get shot by the police for opening beers in your own backyard. That's right. Drink responsibly, friends. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Can we do it? Are you going to fit it? Oh, absolutely. Oh, look at Thank that. Thank you, Zoigel House. Mmm. So this is the Zogel House Kolsch. Uh, it is a 4.9% uh, 20 IBU. So, and here. So not very bitter, not very, uh, shouldn't be very hop forward, but we'll. And I've got the Ooh. Northern German style Pilsner. 4.8% alcohol content, 42 IBUs. Brewed and bottled by Zogel House in Portland, Oregon. So you PNWs can. Uh, That's right. Uh, do, you guys, do you guys know Jacob from EVGA? I actually met him for the first time at CES this last year. Um, spent uh, probably 10 or 15 minutes talking to him. So. Absolutely. Um, I'm, nice. not like, I'm not like first name basis with him, but I do know him. So. Absolutely. He's going to be on the show in the future. Just right, keep exactly. Yeah, he'll, he'll be on next week. <laughs> it's going to be my new role from now on. It's just making promises that yeah. Jeff may that or may I not cannot be able to. Keep. Right, yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, someone asked, uh, what's the uh, Elkar, the sweet Elkars in the back <laughs> background? Uh, Elkars47.com. This show brought to you by Elkars47.com. <laughs> Not really. Nope. Um, yeah, if you're interested in the uh, the butterfly opener, let me know down in the comments. Um, I am looking at opening up a merch store. I am in talks to finally get some merch out for you guys. It's about uh, time. I'm looking at uh, glasses, both conical and imperial uh, pint glasses. Nice. Um, I'm also looking at t-shirts, bottle openers, uh, hats. possibly some other apparel hats. Baby onesies. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, making promises again. Well, hey, you know, I'm just like trying to broaden your market reach here. Uh, what's Jacob's last name? Freeman. Jacob Freeman. What, was somebody calling you out? They're Someone just like, was you calling don't know, me out. You don't know anything, I Jeff. totally know Jacob. <laughs> <laughs> I have his email address. You think he's related to Gordon Freeman at all? You know, from uh, Half-Life? Uh, Jacob talks a lot more. Oh, so that's fair enough. Yeah, Gordon yeah. doesn't really say much. <laughs> All right, on really to... good at killing head crabs, though. Yep. Uh, on to the other big news for the week um, is, uh, as I mentioned, get ready to get your seven dollar checks. <laughs> uh, class action lawsuit alleged against Samsung, Micron, and Hynix for DRAM supply causing price inflation. Uh, uh, this is a lawsuit that's been filed in the U.S. District Court for Northern California uh, by the attorneys law firm Hagrin and Behrman, um, or Higgins and Behrman, excuse me, um, and to 
put those names in perspective, Higgins and Behrman, um, they actually previously had a judgment awarded to them against Samsung, Micron, and Hynix for memory price fixing in the tune of $300 million, I believe, in 2006. Holy crap. So there's a history between this law firm and these companies already. They know what to look for. Um, and quote the attorneys, what we've uncovered in, in the DRAM market is a classic antitrust price fixing scheme in which a small number of pink, kingpin corporations hold the lion's share of the market, said Steve Berman, managing partner of uh, Hagen's Berman. Instead of playing by the rules, Samsung, Micron, and Hynix put, uh, chose to put consumers in a chokehold, ringing the market uh, for profits. Now, here is the average DRAM price uh, for between uh, 2014 and 2018. And you can see all the way back here in June 2014, it was uh, $2.75 per megabyte-ish or something like that. Um, or whatever the... Right. Uh, per chip, excuse me. Oh. $2.70 per chip. And you can kind of see it falling and falling and falling. And right here in May 2016 is when I bought my last 32 gigabyte <laughs> kit of memory brand new. And I bought it off Newegg and it was $110. Wow. For DDR4 2400 uh, HyperX memory um, in May 2016. That's actually when I purchased it. Uh, two years later, that same kit is $450. Jeez. Okay. And the reason being is, oh, there's a DRAM shortage. Yeah. No, there's artificially shorted uh, supply, um, which means all of the companies <laughs> can now sell the RAM for whatever they want. Um, and you can see there's a pretty good correlation between all of a sudden when the prices got lower or right. got higher and when the company's profits started going up. Um, they are bringing in record profits uh, just hand over foot. They think nobody was going to notice this? No, they knew someone was going to notice, but the profits they make in the interim is probably less than the fine that they're going to have. Oh, we're in the wrong business, man. Totally. <laughs> I say that on a weekly basis whenever I have to pay write a, a check for a contractor or run some new fiber. or and So um, I think I've mentioned this on the show before. In, in my business, I, I do some fiber runs to, to remote locations. We had a 15 or no, 21 mile fiber run quoted. It was $1.4 million to, to string 21 miles of fiber. Wow. Because there were no organizations tying into it. It was just us stringing our own fiber. So for the road crews and for burial and for pull permits and, and the, the fiber itself is cheap. Like the fiber was less than $100,000 for the whole strand. Um, but it was $1.3 million to install it. And then I have to have another company come out and terminate the ends and put it in the panel and everything else. So... <laughs> it's a lot of money. Yeah. I'm in the wrong business. Yeah, I'm in the wrong business. Exactly. Look, like, whenever, whenever I pay low-volt yeah. contractors, whenever say, I pay... You can have your organization call me if you want, right? Right, exactly. I'll, I'll charge half that. I can't guarantee the same quality or the same time frame, but uh, I can guarantee it. I'll yep. give you that old Rhett <laughs> Weisenfels guarantee. Uh, guys, which was the last CPU that supports Windows 7? I believe it was Skylake. Uh, so the 6000 series Intel chips. Uh, I'm not sure on AMD, but I'm pretty sure Ryzen required Windows 10. Uh, any of the Ryzen chips required Windows 10. Uh, or at least 8.1. Um, but I'm pretty sure Windows 10 on those. Um, so yeah, 6000 series Intel chips and FX series on, on AMD. See, I remember, not to change the subject too hard from what you were just yeah. talking about, but going back to uh, memory costs and stuff, uh, I seem to recall like when I first got into computers and stuff like that when mm -hmm. I was a young boy that the, the, <laughs> and I was oh, just a wee lad <laughs> just a wee little boy uh eat me lucky charms just kidding that's horrible uh <laughs> lucky charms are garbage okay it's all about cap and crunch anyways uh let's cut the roof of my mouth I can't, I can't, I can't stand them <laughs> it's like eating sugared glass <laughs> I, I, I'm a cinnamon toast crunch guy myself oh my god I just had the off brand <laughs> well no not cinnamon toast crunch I guess golden grams actually sorry never oh. mind not the same Cinnamon Toast Crunch is basically <laughs> cinnamon flavored golden grams, okay? Now, Cinnamon Toast Crunch is great, but after like three midnight bowls of that in a row, like it's just too much cinnamon. So you go the golden grams route, mm -hmm. right? And you could have like three, four bowls of that at 2 a.m. and you're not gonna be burned out on any sort of flavor. Oh, I beg to differ. <laughs> I guess I guess I haven't reached the, <coughs> the four bowl limit yet. Jeff's, yeah. Jeff's talking five or six bowls. Oh, I've, I've been there. <laughs> 
But, Those were dark times. <laughs> but early 2000s... Uh, yeah, we were talking when you were just a wee lad. Just a wee little boy. Uh, there was a ram shortage due to, like, nature events, I guess. Tsunamis mm-hmm. and things like that wiped out a bunch of factories. And so, like, mm-hmm. the ram that dominated the market was SD RAM. Which, if you remember, like, you had to buy in pairs. Yeah. yeah like, you had to buy... You know, you couldn't just get, like... You're a, talking about Rambus memory. Oh, Rambus. Oh, what am I... T- so sorry. Brain yeah, that's what you had to buy in pairs. I had a concussion recently. Yeah. Uh, Rambus. <laughs> yes, thank you. So sorry. I, w- I just read this and I was like... SD RAM. Blah, blah. Rambus. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, you had to buy it in pairs. Anyway, the cost of that was outrageous. And I always wondered if it truly was due to tsunamis wiping out factories or if it was some sort of like price fixing scheme like this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, well, there was also a fire in one of the Samsung factories. And there was also an earthquake in Taiwan recently that's actually taken out some factories and some oh, productivity. Geez. And so most of this is artificial. Don't get me wrong. I'm not letting Samsung off the hook here. You, you were constraining the marketplace before that factory caught fire. In fact, mm. you may have set that fire. I am starting to believe that. <laughs> Maybe your workers set the fire. That's right. I didn't set the fire. I didn't light it, but I tried to fight it yeah. or something. I don't know the lyrics of that song. <laughs> It was always mm. burning since the world's been turning. Yeah, dude, El Pollo. Oh, yeah, Steve. Steve. Uh, Rambus was excellent, but I do recall upgrading from, uh, I guess, uh, 512 <laughs> megabytes to like 760 or something yeah. like that because I got two sticks of. God. I, w- I yeah, guess it was two sticks. Rambus six was six hot four? garbage. No. Um, basically, what they did is they changed the numbering scheme because back before Rambus, it was PC100, PC133, and PC166. And that was SD memory. Um, what Rambus did is they came in and said, hey guys, we have this new 3600 memory. And everyone went, <laughs> what they did is they multiplied their number by eight. <laughs> they, gave, they gave the bit speed rating rather than the byte speed rating. Right. Yeah, um, go which, figure. Which uh, 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 2100 is also written as 21466 or something. I don't, I don't remember the, the conversion because right. we all just know it as 2100 speed DDR4. Um, but uh, yeah, you can still do that same thing. Right. Um, but uh, that's what Rambus did. And so to be fair, it was like 400 megahertz speed memory, but they multiplied it by eight, got, oh, 3,600 or 3,200 speed. Right. Um, but we like cast latency of like 34. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, there was a time when it was all you could buy, okay? Yep. And I went to the local hardware store, and I bought two six of 128 to upgrade my computer. Yep. And I got a lot of crap for it at school because people were like, well, how much RAM does your computer have? And I was like, 760 megabytes, dog. And they were like, that's not even a real number. You're full of crap. 768. <laughs> what are you talking about? I do remember I had a PC with 384 at one point. <laughs> well, it's a, one, it's a 256 and a 128. Right. There you yeah. go. So I, I know all the weird in-betweens. I know. It really is. Um, I've had one with 10 megabytes before. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Hey, hey. Vlad, thank you, sir. First, first hit Just of dropped night. off the hooker and <laughs> picked her up. Now I'm ready to talk second beers. <laughs> Vlad, I never know if you're kidding or not, but welcome to the show. Vlad, <laughs> I'm sure she would have loved to hear about the memory price fixing, okay? What are you doing, yep. okay? For an extra, I don't know, what's the going rate of a hooker these days? $17? No. It, I've been I'm out, out of, of the, touch. I've been out of the market for I'm a out while, of touch. Man. I'm so sorry. Yep. I have, a, I have a buddy who does a joke, not to derail us too much. <laughs> have I said this on the show before, I, Jeff? Stop me if I, I have. I don't remember. Where he says, <laughs> he says, you know, there was a, there was a bench point when I knew <laughs> that I was a full grown adult. Uh huh. And he goes, you know, what, a couple of these benchmarks, I, I just manned up and I got a hotel near the airport rather than hoofing it up there at 3 a.m. to catch a 6 a.m. flight, right? Mm-hmm. So he gets a hotel before... Does a couple other things, but then the final one is, I didn't argue with the hooker for more than 20 minutes about the going price of a hand job. <laughs> That's when you know you're getting old. Right. 20 bucks, you know, it's worth the 20 minutes, I guess. Back in my day, it was only $15. <laughs> well, inflation, Grandpa. Yeah. Your generation did this to us. That's right. <laughs> Damn millennials and their entitled hand jobs. Yeah, they're killing the hand job industry. <laughs> Go eat your avocado toast. 
Oh. Soon all we'll be able to get is vegan lattes and vegan old-fashioned hand jobs. <laughs> <sighs> oh. <laughs> Wow. When yeah. did this show go I off the rails? I said not to derail it, but then I did. So, <laughs> you totally so did. sorry. Let's take it back to news. Uh, Simone would appreciate this humor. Good. Um, I'm glad. Now, I, I don't know Simone personally. We're going to get into a, a kind of touchy story uh, here. If, if you have not heard and if you don't know who she is, uh, Simone Gertz, uh, she is recently, uh, about a year ago, she was brought on by the Tested.com crew with Adam, Adam Savage, Norman Chan. And right, whatnot. yeah, yeah, So yeah. she's doing things for them. Um, she announced on her channel, I believe on Monday, uh, that she has a pretty significant brain tumor. Um, uh, about the size of a golf ball, as, as what she Holy said. Holy crap. Um, and it's right behind her right eye, and it's been causing some swelling behind her right eye, and uh, she attributed it to allergies, um, but, uh, so again, kind of a somber story. I don't want to bring the show down. Um, uh, I don't know Simone personally, but I love her work. I love her interaction on Reddit. Uh, she's, uh, the, the queen of shitty robots. Right. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. She's been on Conan. She's been on a couple other shows. Uh, she's huge in Swedish TV. Um, here but, she is uh, with Stephen Colbert. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Colbert, uh, is another one that she's been on. Uh, but, uh, she is a fantastically wonderful, genuine person. She is so funny. And even through the humor, uh, she has a new hashtag, tumor humor. Uh, <laughs> so she wants you to make jokes about her tumor. And, and she's making jokes about her tumor. Mm. Um, and uh, um, But anyway, if you think of her, it, what, whatever you believe in, say a prayer, put her in your thoughts, whatever. Send, send some good thoughts Simone's way. Uh, she has some surgery coming up at the end of May. Um, to remove this tumor. They're going to cut into her skull. They're going to remove it. Uh, at this point, it's non-cancerous as far as they can tell, but they won't know until they truly get in there. Um, but she's uh, saying that she could have a number of, of lasting issues from this. Uh, she could actually lose her right eye. She could be paralyzed on her left side of her face. She yep. could be, there, there's a lot of things going on here that are very, very touchy. So, well, from Craft Computing, Simone, I want you to know we are thinking of you. Absolutely. So... Uh, but like I said, Simone would appreciate that level of humor. Absolutely. Back so. <laughs> back to the jokes about golf ball sized tumors. Um, yeah, she, um. she was. Uh, <laughs> one of the jokes she makes in this is uh, is when she's talking about the side effects. She goes, uh, "If um, when this is done, I could have like spinal fluid dripping out my nose." I know you didn't think this video was going to get any sexier. <laughs> <laughs> So again, she has a very dark, sadistic sense of humor, and I love her for that. So. Well, now whenever like she's got squeaky hinges or like uh, something like that, she can just lube it right up. So um, no problem. This wasn't in her video, but uh, she, I, I believe, in in one of her blog posts or on her Instagram or something, she did write up a, a decent couple of paragraphs about what she's been experiencing. And I guess when she went into the doctor and went in for the MRI and they found the tumor, uh, and they were talking to her about options and surgery and everything else, they said. Uh, um, uh, I, the doctor like didn't tell her that she he knew who she was, but when they're telling her we need to cut your skull open and take the tumor out, maybe once we take it out you won't build robots so shitty. <laughs> 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 oh, that's the best thing I've ever heard. Oh, that's great. Yeah, and uh, if she survives and lost her eye, she's probably going to make a cyborg one. Actually, she said she's already been designing eye patches. Nice. Yeah. Good so, for her. So she has taken this with the utmost grace and sense of humor. Yeah. And uh, and just go get them spirit that you possibly could have. So, again, Samotes, Tested Family, thoughts are with you. We love you guys. I watch you guys all the time. Absolutely. Godspeed. We'll be thinking about you. So. All right. <laughs> On to some lighter news to, uh, <laughs> to break that one up. Uh, this one I just posted before you got here, so I doubt you've read this. Book. I don't think I don't recognize it. you brought this up, and I was like, "Oh, great!" Yeah, this is like my worst nightmare. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> um, this was posted like an hour and a half ago. Is is, is, where I, is where I found it. I love the headline though already. <laughs> Undercover cops busted a large Lego crime ring in Portland. Um, apparently, Portland is actually a rather hotbed for Lego theft. Um, we have a lot of retail establishments here that uh, are a lot of big box stores. Um, oh, Vlad, uh, I asked her, how good's your BJs? She said, if Threadripper was a girl, I'd be overclocked. 
<laughs> I'm sure he's talking about the uh, prostitute <laughs> and not <Smith>. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, it was a little tasteless, but hey, you know what? Hashtag humor, uh, tumor humor. <laughs> Hashtag tumor humor. Uh, anyway, uh, Portland is actually kind of a rather hotbed for Lego theft. Uh, we have a lot of stores in the area. We have a lot of stores that do carry Lego. Uh, we have a. This was actually most of these were stolen from a local chain here called Fred Meyer, um, which is used to have presence all the way to the midwest i believe they've scaled back since i was then, gonna say but, uh, is that just a local chain i mean i know it's it's, started it's a large like chain coast, it, it yeah. is a large chain but it's, it's more of a west coast thing okay. we, we don't have piggly wigglies we have fred myers oh how about that i didn't so, even know piggly wigglies was the thing until piggly right wigglies now. a thing um i've only ever seen one driving by in arkansas in real life right. i believe it was um seth myers older brother who started this one maybe mike no mike myers older brother who's who started what fred myers Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just kidding. Stupid joke. <laughs> I used to ask my parents. I was like, who is Fred Myers? Why is there a store named after him? And, yeah. and at the time, you know, uh, Austin Powers was huge. And they were mm. like, well, Mike Myers' older brother was more business-minded. He yeah. was the artist. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't give into that artsy crap and become an actor. He got down, got his nose dirty, and started his own business. <laughs> He's the family golden child, okay? Yeah. Mike Myers just let everybody down in that one movie where he played almost every role. Yep. <laughs> uh, like all of them? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, anyway, so 40-year-old Raji Azar uh, was arrested on suspicion of running a large Lego fencing scheme in which he was advertising on Craigslist and... Um, uh, what's the other one? Offer Up. Offer Up, thank you. Uh, Craigslist and offer up for people to steal Legos from retail establishments, namely Fred Meyer, walk out the door with them. He will buy them at like 30% cost and then he will resell them either on eBay or Craigslist himself as brand new sets. See, here's and the thing. When you're stealing stuff, word of the wise, never sell for 30% cost. Right. You're getting 50 cents on the dollar or nothing at minimum. Right. Okay? Don't short yourself. Well, what, what the cops said was uh, he was advertising to opiate addicts and meth addicts and things like that. Oh, absolutely. And they'll do anything for a quick fix. See? And s I have a lot of experience with it. This is like my, they'll, they'll my field. They'll, cry, they'll <laughs> climb up and have a freeway and steal the copper out of the Amber Alert signs. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, th th this is my this is my professional field here. Okay, mm. uh, <laughs> this is Lego theft and me meth addiction. Well, not just Lego theft and <laughs> meth addiction. We're talking heroin addicts too. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but got to keep your brow high. Organized retail crime in in particular. It's, oh, I forgot you were into that. I yeah, absolutely. I steal so much. To, no, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if you don't have a store, you'd run out of your own garage. You're just doing life wrong. Okay. Life rewards people. No, <laughs> just kidding. I'm not. A, I'm not advocating. We for are the not lawyers. We crime. do not provide legal advice. <laughs> we are not lawyers. That's going to be a, a slogan yeah. of the show from now. On. That's right. We are not lawyers. Uh, no, but <laughs> I just. I just love this because no legal services provided, express or implied. Not at all. And in fact, warranty is void if seal is broken. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that happened a long time ago. <laughs> But, uh, see, this is a huge thing, and it's not just for collector's items, obviously, which, like, Legos have sort of become, but it's anything, the biggest one, especially at small, smaller, not, uh, you know, department stores, is, like, baby products. Yeah. Formula, diapers. Nowadays, you go to a store, they got the formula locked up, yep. right? I mean, and that's because people hit it so hard, mm -hmm. then they go sell it to somebody in the garage for 50 cents on the dollar, and they turn around and sell it to people who need it for 75 cents on the dollar yep. or something like that, you know? And people yep. are still, they'll do it because baby stuff is so expensive. I, I currently buy 10 cans of formula a month. I totally understand. Right, it's expensive. Yeah. Like that Similac or whatever it is, mm -hmm. Pedia Light or not Pedia Light. But yeah, yeah. is what we're on, yeah. It's all expensive, $29 man. $29 a can. If you can buy it in bulk, it's 24 for like a six-pack from Costco. There was, uh, right up the street from a place where I work, uh, a Safeway, actually. Uh, I was on my lunch break, and I'm looking out the window, and there's just cops on cops on cops out there. And I went over and talked to them. They busted some people walking out the door with like four grand of baby formula. Mm -hmm. Four grand yep. from a Safeway, dude. Yep. 
<sighs> yep. Anyways, back to the Legos. That needs to be a t-shirt. What needs to be a t-shirt? Clarify, because I'm in the market for looking for slogans for t-shirts. Um, yeah, Face Crusher. Come on. Yeah, Face Crusher. What needs to be a t-shirt? What would you buy on a t-shirt? Probably, we are not lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> we can't Craft computing. We're not lawyers. <laughs> um, I will say the, the one that I really like is, uh, don't worry, I've still got beer. <laughs> <laughs> that that was that was one of my uh, in my average gamer's PC. Uh, one of my intros to that video was uh, you might notice I'm in my garage and not my studio, but don't worry, I've still got beer. <laughs> Absolutely. So don't worry, I've still got beer is probably going to make a slogan somewhere. See, yeah, the beer is just it's a great barometer for where we're at, mm. not only in life but on the video. Okay, mm. we're getting deep in here now. Yep. Anyway, Lego theft is pretty big because um, it's a very high-cost retail item, and they're not serialized. They don't know where the sets came from. They're not regionalized. They're not um, cataloged in any way, shape, or form as far as the individual item itself. Um, they're cataloged as far as the set goes, but if you've got 20 of the same set, you don't know where those 20 boxes came from. Right. Um, there's no manufacturing lots. There's no serial numbers. There's no traceable identifiers on these. And so they don't know if they were gifts. They don't know if you bought them. They don't know anything. Yeah. Whereas if I go to a camera store and I steal a camera, that camera is serialized. Oh, that yeah. lens is serialized. The batteries sometimes well, are And that's how they hit those rings so much faster. Yeah. Um, you know, some other ones that are like really hard to hit for you up and coming criminals is like... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> is like... I'm um, not a lawyer. One one that I worked really hard against was uh, like fishing supplies, like lures mm -hmm. and stuff. Yep. Because some of these lures are five, ten, twenty dollars, you know, depending on what they get, and you yep. can stuff a whole peg of them in your pocket. Yep. And then of course you go on Craigslist and somebody's like, I just have more equipment than I need, so come buy them for really cheap. That's right. That's a little difficult to unravel too. But then when you get into cameras or you get into other high end stuff like uh, uh, optics and stuff in general, yep. it's like one that I worked a lot with, like. Mm -hmm. uh, binoculars and, mm. and lenses and like uh lots of um nikon and yeah things like that nikon bushnell go down the list of vortex yeah, yeah. um those <laughs> those rings are busted up quick because they're serialized and because people mm. can find out where a lot of these things come from very easily uh we are not lawyers he says it needs to be on a t-shirt we are not lawyers <laughs> craft computing we are not lawyers <laughs> That might make a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, it just needs to be said, because yeah. earlier we were talking about like suing people and all this stuff, and it's like, I mean, look. Yeah. If look, you think we're lawyers... We're not providing legal advice. If we think... If you think we're lawyers... If you think I'm providing good legal advice right now. <laughs> uh. Anyway, this Lego crime ring... <laughs> um, apparently, the guy had $50,000 right. worth of Legos in his garage... And he had so many sets, uh, they were able to line his driveway with Lego sets. Right. This is all Lego that's out in front in that picture right there. Um, See, and what's interesting, so it says here, joint efforts by investigators in Fred Meyer's Organized Retail Theft Unit and Northwest yep. Organized Retail Crime Alliance. The person that taught me all about ORC was a Fred Meyer. Was Fred Meyer? Yeah. Fred Meyer and Target are two of the most <laughs> notorious down and dirty... <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me, anti-theft organizations that are not public. They're private entities. Right. Um, that and Apple. A Apple has like a, a whole Gestapo. Oh, God. Um, yeah. they, they are, They'll black bag you in a heartbeat. Oh, yeah, totally. Uh, if you get caught by Apple with like a stolen prototype, you'll wake up with a bag over your head in the middle of the desert <laughs> um, at, with a San Francisco PD officer behind them going, I didn't see a damn thing. <laughs> I'm serious on that. Now, I'm going to let uh, you off with a warning this time, sir. But uh, there was, uh, uh, since we're talking about the investigation kind of side of things, um, there was a Reddit thread a number of years ago in which a guy had posted on there, um, Thieves of Reddit, how did you get caught, et cetera, et cetera. And one guy said, I used to walk into Targets all the time. And what I would do is I would steal... A shirt? Um, not shirts, but he would steal Blu-rays. Oh, uh, sorry. D D I was thinking of something else. DVDs, Blu-rays, CDs. He would steal a whole stack of merchandise, and he'd just put it in his pocket, and he'd walk right out the front door. Absolutely. He'd walk through the security gate, and it would go off, and he didn't give two craps, and so he just keeps on walking, and they'd let him walk on out. Yeah. He'd walk to his car, put him in the car. He'd sell him on eBay or Craigslist or wherever, or offer up or Facebook, wherever he can get money. 
And, uh, and he did this for like two years. He, he was just taking target for, for all the stuff. And yeah. he, would, he would circle all around the target. Like he'd hit one one month and then the other the next month, but he'd walk out with $1,000 yeah. in merchandise. Yeah. Um, and uh, one day he walked into a target and a guy walked, walked up right next to him as like kind of like walked lockstep next to him. And he goes, David. And the guy went, do you know me? He goes, yeah, you need to come with me. <laughs> You're a celebrity around these parts, friend. <laughs> and the guy grabbed him by the arm and he took him into the back office. And uh, what they had was a stack of papers about this thick with every single item he had ever stolen. I've been that his, guy who his, compiled that report before. His, <laughs> his driving records, what apartment he lived in, where he lived, what he sold the items for. All known associations. All known associations. Their phone numbers, their addresses. Everything. They knew every bit of personal identifiable knew, information about him. They knew his blood type. They knew, yeah. See, they knew uh, what porn he liked. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not hard. I right. mean, <laughs> well, he was BBW for sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, but anyway, they said, uh, um, uh, basically, we have enough for a felony conviction for thirty years with the stack that we have on you because you've wow. been doing this for two years. Wow. We, we've got two hundred thousand dollars plus worth of merchandise that you've walked out of our stores within two years, and. Uh, and they said, you're going to go to prison um, unless you reform. They said, work for us. <laughs> they didn't say work for us. Oh, bummer. But they said, don't ever walk into a Target store again. I can't believe they gave him that deal. You yeah. know, uh, um, I, 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 I know there was there was some legal fees he had to do. And there was, I think he served six months in jail. Well, yeah. See, here's um, the thing. So every, every theft that they could prove, mm-hmm. uh, I guess I don't know where this is, but Oregon law... Uh, permits retailers Mm -hmm. to uh, uh, my brain I hit my head earlier Uh, (laughs) they allows them to and that's um, just recently (laughs) right yeah let's not talk about all the drinking I've done Uh, anyway kill more brain cells absolutely it allows them to impose a fine of up to $250 plus the cost of any merchandise you stole. Yeah, per theft. Per, per, per incident. incident. Right. Absolutely. So every time he's walking into a store, he's stealing something. That's a $250 fine plus the cost of the merchandise. Can't mm-hmm. be any higher than that. Yep. However, every single time that happens, he's getting slammed. So I, I would have hired that guy if it were me, but <laughs> I don't know. I've got different... I, I remember he cut some kind of a deal where... Um, where he, I think he served six months in prison and uh, or in jail, and uh, and he had to repay a certain amount and right, whatnot. See. And they're a lot um, more forgiving against people who don't do violent crimes. Correct. You know, I had a guy when I was uh, working more physical job who actually hit somebody with a freaking baton. Yeah. And uh, the DA let him go. Yeah. It was like, don't be a bad boy, and we won't have to see you again. So what did he do? He next time he went out and beat up a police officer. So. Now he's in jail, but oh, he just hits a random like civvy on the streets or whatever. Yeah. Don't be a bad boy, and we won't have to see you again. Yeah. yeah, thanks for that. He also did a felony theft on top of like five counts of armed robbery with a dangerous weapon. So good on you. Yep. Yeah. The- <laughs> yeah. Not that we're advising you on criminal activity, but no. if you have a pocket knife on you when you commit a robbery, that's armed robbery. Right. The thing is to see, and I used to go on. I think it's been taken down now because they couldn't. St- they couldn't help themselves from being idiots, but the shoplifting subreddit, yeah, uh, it was very popular, and yeah. they had some very strict rules on how you could talk about shoplifting and all this stuff, but some yep. people just couldn't obey the rules, and so finally Reddit had to take them down. But I used to go on there, and even though like I don't agree with shoplifting in the slightest, I would see... I, I, went on there in the early days and saw so much misinformation mm-hmm. about stuff. People were like, well, if you just do this, like they can't stop you, or they can't do this. So I used to go on and like basically offered like sound advice on like how to not escalate the situation yeah. how to if you get caught how to like get the barest possible punishment yep because a people get hurt doing this yeah the, go the, on youtube and you can watch videos of shoplifting arrests gone wrong where somebody gets stabbed or somebody yeah and it's like nobody wants that you're freaking stealing you're stealing a keyboard you're stealing a set of headphones yeah nobody wants you to get hurt nobody wants anybody else to get hurt yep 
So I used to go on there and, and uh, like coach people on how to shoplift like a like a good person, mm -hmm. and people ate it up like crazy. They would always like people would direct message me and be like, "So let's say I wanted to do this, yeah." You know, and I wouldn't. Let's say I have a target in mind. Right. Not that I do, but <laughs> right. hypothetically. And I wouldn't evangelize to them. I wouldn't try to like you know pour ethics down their throat. <laughs> I just told them how to be safe. Yeah. As possible, because I I hate seeing people get hurt. And that was a field I worked in for a really long time. Yeah. So <laughs> I always get a kick thinking about that back in the day. <laughs> and people are always like, hey, can you stop coaching the shoplifters on how to steal stuff, please? It's like, <laughs> no, because one day that person's going to go into your store. And if I don't coach them, they're going to stab you. So. That's right. That's right. <laughs> oh... How did we get on that uh, for so long? ORC. Sorry. Well, for what? We were talking about my career. We so. were. We were. <laughs> I, had to, I had to grab it and run. Yep. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I have one last story since we're on the shoplifting. Let's do it. Let's hear it. Okay. So I used to work for a local grocery chain um, in, uh, in the Salem area. And uh, uh, I, I used to do a lot of closing shifts. And right. so I, I would work the 8 p.m. to 3 a.m. shift. Right. Um, and uh, so one day, my night manager walks up to me, and he goes, "Hey, I need you to go lock both the in bo both of the opening doors, bo both of the because there's uh, there's two entrances to the store, one on either side of like the registers, right? Um, and they were both the automatic sliding doors. And uh, he goes, "Hey, I need you to go go lock both the door, or go go turn off the the automatic open for both the doors, right?" And I said, "Okay, why?" He goes, "Just go do it. Trust me." I went, okay. And so I walk over there and click the, the power button on the on the auto openers. And I said, okay, why? And he walks back and he goes, because there's this there's these three teenagers who are walking around the 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 the, uh, the store, store at eleven o'clock at night. Right. There's only you and I here, but they're walking around the store with an empty cart, with two <laughs> empty carts, um, and they keep walking by the by the uh, by the beer aisle. <laughs> they'll walk down the beer aisle and then they'll pick like aisle seven and then they'll walk back down the beer aisle and then they'll go down aisle 12 and then they'll walk down the beer aisle and they'll go down aisle two and 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 he goes they're gonna they're gonna make a run and i went okay and he goes i said what do we do he goes just sit back and watch <laughs> and i said okay and so we're both sitting in the the management office just kind of chilling see, and uh, this is a great go-to tactic too i can already kind of see where this is going. making sure we're we're, we're seen <laughs> you know that that we're we're not watching them and we're watching on the camera monitor, and sure enough, they walk down the beer aisle, and one of them's going, "Okay, go!" And they load up both shopping carts full of beer, and they make a beeline for the door, which is right across from the beer aisle. So it's a straight line. And two shopping carts with one kid in between them hits that door and just crushes, and they all just fall over. And the manager kind of slowly walks over, and he goes, "You're gonna pick all that beer back up. You're gonna put it back on the shelf exactly where it belongs. You're gonna face it for me." And then the police are going to come. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I love that. I hope the police played ball, too. And, and the manager was a big dude. Oh, nice. Like, like he could have blocked that door by himself. <laughs> um, like, the double opening doors. At right, the front of the yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love stories like that. And he just walks up and he goes, here's what's going to happen. You guys are going to put all that beer back in the cart, walk it back to the, to the aisle, put it back in the refrigerated coolers, Properly faced, even stacked properly, and then the police are going to come and take you away. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I love that. See, I guess uh, one more story. Okay. See, then this, we got to get on to uh, AMD and Intel news. This this is actually how I broke my, <coughs> how I broke my ribs. Ah, okay. Because one of my little one of my little side jobs is I'm still like consulting for local grocery chain. Mm -hmm how to secure their store, how to prevent shoplifting, how to apprehend shoplifters safely, and how to process them for police and all that yep. sort of stuff. Well, anyways, one day I get asked to come in, and as you know, I went in for two hours. Mm -hmm. And I was just supposed to be doing some paperwork and stuff like that, but they said, you know, like, hey, because of the situation, <laughs> like, we don't have any girls here, so if you want to go and... Uh, Walk the floor once or twice. Right, keep yeah. your eyes open. Yeah. So I said, okay, I'll keep my eyes open. And I kid you not, so I'm lo my kind of routine is for the first day of the week, I'm looking at mugshots online. You can go to arrests.org, and if your state is a part of this, you can review all of the arrests by county, all that type of stuff. And so I'm looking at mugshots in, my, in our county. And I bring up this one guy, and I make a joke about how he looks like if Jon Snow was a tweaker. from Jon Snow from <laughs> Game of Thrones, right? So then I see somebody... 
And they're looking sketchy as all heck. So I go out and follow them. And they do this whole shuffle. They do all this mm-hmm. thing. And they try to walk out the door with a bag full of groceries. And I stop him. And, of course, it's pretty civil. And I bring him into the office. And I'm talking to the guy. But his, his, his girlfriend wasn't with him. And I go, hey, man, what's your girlfriend's name? I want to bring her in here, too. And he goes, oh, okay, her name's blah, blah. And I go, go out the door. And I'm like, hey, blah, blah, blah. Why don't you come into my office? And she's like, uh, I don't want to. And I said, look, I got your boyfriend in here. It's cool. Like, I won't need to involve the cops if you guys are cooperative. Just need to get the product back. Just need to fill out some paperwork. You guys can never come back here again, right? <laughs> and meanwhile, I'm trying to get an employee to go get me a witness for the interview. Uh-huh. And the, the, the employee comes back and she says something along the lines of like, oh, I couldn't get them on the phone. Uh-huh. So the guy I have in the office, he goes, he freaks out. He goes, yeah. oh, they're calling the cops. So he gets up and he bolts out the door. So I grab him. <laughs> and he's going, I'm trying to reason with him. I'm like, yo, dude, this is still cool. Let's come I'm back to the office. You. I'm telling you. Let's come yeah. back to the office. But then all these scenarios are going through my head. I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, if he, like, why is he running? This yeah. is crazy. Like, yeah. he has like $15 of groceries. Yeah. And so I start thinking of like public safety and all this stuff. So I, I look, man, you step foot out of this breezeway. I'm taking you to the ground. Yeah. So he steps foot out of the breezeway. I take him to the ground. His girlfriend gets involved in all this sort of stuff. So I'm like fighting off two people. But somewhere in this whole tussle, I go to the ground. I hit my head. He fell on top of me or something like that. And I broke my ribs apparently. And my head's bleeding everywhere. Yeah. I don't really, like, I can't see straight. I can barely see. Like, it's like my vision is just like swimming. Yeah. Get him in handcuffs. Bring him into the office. Apparently with a concussion. Blood was on the pavement (laughs) from where I hit my head. And, um, no, 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 guys, seriously, I got this. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, the one guy I get in there, he goes, your head's bleeding. I was like, you think? <laughs> I just like yelled at everybody. And the guy kept trying to, I felt so bad. I was so mean to him. And he was actually <laughs> like, he didn't mean to hurt me. So yeah. like, you know, I, I did kind of feel bad about that whole thing. But anyway, I get him in the office and he hands me his ID and I'm looking at him like, where do I recognize that name? I was like, have you been arrested recently? He's like, yeah. So I wake up my computer. I had his mugshot <laughs> on the screen. <laughs> And I was like, does anybody ever tell you you look like Jon Snow? And he's like, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Then I went to the hospital. I'm but glad I, I'll let you tell that story. <laughs> I'm really glad. I wasn't going to because I've told it like way too many times. But after we got talking about it, I was like, I, I just have to tell that one. So. All right. Thanks for bearing with me, uh, Talking Heads You know listeners. what? The viewership is actually not going down. In fact, we have more now. We've gone up. Look, guys, I'll give you shoplifting advice all day. But That's right. Let's finish the tech news first. Tech news. Tech news. Then we can get into BSing again. Yeah. You guys can... You guys like we can... haven't been BSing for 25 minutes now. Right. I, <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just hit me up on the on the, on the the Craft Computing Discord channel, and I'll, I'll tell you guys all sorts of stories. That's so. right. Patreon backers, only a dollar gets you into my Discord channel. You can only chat. Only a dollar. That oh. has to be the best bargain that I've ever heard of, only Jeff. Only a dollar. Only a dollar. Gets you into the Discord, uh, exclusive to... To craft computing Patreon backers, uh, lets you chat with me, Rhett, Steve, John. If you want to talk to those guys, I don't know why you would. Shoplifting chips. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but also you get all the YouTube videos early. Yep, uh, you get some of them early. Some. I'm so sorry. My, my schedule gets... is very tight. Sometimes it's like, dude, it's like Saturday night. I gotta release this. Mm. So you get some of them early, like the amazing. Wish.com dollar graphics card video. The Wish.com video went early. Uh, my... But it wasn't edited to have the third item. That's right. Fourth, fourth, third, fourth, fourth item. Fourth item. So yeah, sorry. that's right. So, so you run the risk of having to watch the video twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah. So a dollar a month gets you uh, chat access to myself and, and all the co-hosts here at Talking Heads. Plus Absolutely. the great community we're building over there. Um, Absolutely. We we talk about everything there. Uh, not a lot of it tech. I mean, there, there's some tech involved. Oh, there's but, a uh, lot of tech on the channel. Don't let Jeff trick you. Yeah, there's a there, lot of tech on the channel. But. There's a lot of tech on the channel, but there's there's homebrewing stuff. Uh, one of my viewers just uh, made up a couple batches of homemade mead. Yes, I saw that. Uh, so, Which, yeah. hey... Uh, Ship it to us. We'll drink it on the air. I'm actually going to make my own mead. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. Don't ship it to us. We yeah. got to cover I got to cover Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to actually brew up a batch probably in the next couple of weeks. Oh, heck so, yes. Yeah. Oh, got so many stories about me, yeah. but we can talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> We got to get to this last. I even have the AMD slide up and we're still BS. <laughs> All right. So AMD apparently has in their labs right now seven nanometer samples for Zen 2 processors and Vega chips that will be releasing in volume in 2019. This is not a paper release. This is not a soft release. This is the next generation of Ryzen will launch sometime in 2019. 
And these are the steps that we are looking for, uh, or the, uh, the, the upgrade that we're looking for. Zen Plus is great. I love the improvements that they made to the original Zen platform. Um, that being the faster memory support, uh, both in the box and overclocked. Uh, we're getting higher overclocked numbers. We're getting better XFR support for, so for turbo boost. Um, but uh, so it's a great incremental improvement. Zen 2 is supposed to be a leap forward improvement. Right. Um, both in IPC, uh, in energy efficiency, as well as performance and memory support again. Um, so seven nanometer uh, Zen 2. The things that I'm hearing is watch out Intel. This is yeah. when AMD takes it from you. All of the stories I've been reading are Intel's going to be left in the dust. And the reason I say that, the reason I say watch out Intel is because AMD has working 7 nanometer uh, Vega and Zen 2 chips in their labs today. They, they are working with samples today. Is Intel is struggling to make 10 nanometer process an actual thing. 10 nanometer, uh, for, for those who don't know, uh, Skylake was originally built on 14 nanometer, um, on a 14 nanometer FinFET process, right. um, which is how fine of uh, traces they can get on a processor core. Um, the, the smaller the number, the smaller the trace, the more you can pack onto a single die. That, that's that in a nutshell. Um, so Skylake was based on 14 nanometer FinFET design. Uh, and that was in 2014, late 2014. So here we are three and a half years later. Uh, KB Lake is still 14 nanometer. Uh, 10 nanometer was supposed to hit in 2017 and it never hit because they had production problems. They had errors within, within their, their wafer processing. Um, they were losing entire wafers to, to errors and manufacturing defects. They couldn't get it right. And, and originally they go, okay, well, don't worry, next summer, so it's summer 2018, we're going to release 10 nanometer chips to the world. It's been delayed again to at least, 20, at least 2019 is what I'm hearing now. And so Intel can't even get their 10 nanometer fabs together. And one of Intel's claim to fame is they are, what they've always said is three years ahead in FinFET and wafer production than our competitors are. We are so far in front of the game that even if we have a year slip up, we have two years buffer behind that. Well, <laughs> you were supposed to launch 10 nanometer in 2017. Intel is make or AMD is making leaps and bounds in, in their manufacturing processes um, to the point that they have working seven nanometer processes in their labs today with plans to scale that out in volume in 2019 for Zen 2, for, for actual Zen 2. Um, and meanwhile, you can't even get a working 10 nanometer wafer in your lab, <laughs> let alone produce in scale. Talked way too big, way too early. Yeah. <laughs> and he so, was like, guys, you hear what Intel's saying? We got to step up our game. So that three year buffer, because AMD is working so quickly, became a two year buffer. <laughs> and when you're two years late on something. Oh God. The competition catches up. There it goes. There it goes. Exactly. So... Mm. This is like that scene in Master and Commander all over again, where uh, the Dauntlet. Oh, no, wait, what's the name of the ship? And never mind. Oh, sorry, dumb comparison. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that two-year buffer that was there, it ain't there anymore. A AMD's already knocking on the door of single-threaded performance with some of your chips. They got the better overclocking. They got the higher memory support that you've been boasting over them for years. Next year, AMD is going to pass Intel. Yeah. But, you know, like, the hope, though, is that it leads to, like, another, mm -hmm. uh, you know, manufacturing war. Another scale race. Another scale race. Thank right. you. <laughs> Where we get to reap the benefits. Right. Um, <laughs> there's talks that the 2800X, which has not been announced, is actually going to be a 10 or a 12 core part. That's going to be an AM4 compatible part that you drop 10 or 12 cores at at 4 gigahertz into your consumer level board. Um, yeah, we live in a really That's exciting time. What a time to be alive. It's amazing what competition does for a market, both in price and performance. Memory manufacturers, you should probably take note of this. Yeah, listen up. When you actually compete with each other, everyone wins. Right. Which is honestly like, <laughs> no matter which side of, uh, of, you know, of the uh, processor battle you want to take on here, AMD or Intel, 
And I'm sure if you've been in the if you've been in the race long enough, I'm going to interrupt you. Please do. Benjamin Hale, well said. When you can't pay OEMs to not use the competition, you get caught up with. <laughs> look right no look no further than Intel paying AMD or Intel paying Dell to not use AMD processors. Yep. And Intel paying Microsoft to certify the 945 chipset for Vista and Windows 7. Just make your chips. Or 915, excuse me, the 915 chipsets. Just make your chips. Just deliver on your promises. Right. You were ahead of the race for so long, and it's... But when no one's chasing you, then... That's when you slip up. That's when you slip up. Uh, yeah. how, how do you play with the lead? You, you look at, like, dominant football or basketball teams. When you get 30 points up, can you hold a 30-point lead? Not forever. Or do you rest on your laurels and you let the teams come storm back, and all of a sudden it's a two-point game with no. three minutes to go? You try to make it a 50-point lead. Right. <laughs> at least at least when I'm playing. Right. Exactly. But I also put my hands up, okay? Not, I, not I, like I, any of this pro ball crap. I'm up 30. Now I'm up 32. <laughs> That's how I play ball. Watch that go through again. Oh, absolutely. Oh, you forget what that looked like? Here's it one more time. <laughs> All night, son. Oh, here, let me step behind this nice painted line you got. Oh, shoot. Five-point lead now, dog. What? <laughs> what, what are you doing? What? All the geeks in the audience are going, what the hell are they doing? You know, though, speaking of sports, was it three, four, three or four years ago now? No, it had to have been three years ago that Damian Lillard Hit the point three three pointer uh, four years ago. Four yeah. years ago. Yeah, that <sighs> yeah. against playing the Houston Rockets in the first series of the playoffs. That was a great shot. Kept him in the series to win. No, that won the series. That won the that series. That shot won the series. God, does it get any better than that? And then they blew it against San Antonio, and then the uh, next year Aldridge went to San Antonio. That's right. It was San Antonio. <laughs> And, and what's really funny, uh, I'm going to get sportsy here on you. Um, oh, gosh. Because I'm a huge Blazers fan. Look, here's the thing. People are always like, they try they try to like draw these lines about nerddom. Yeah. But like, sports is nerd food. Yeah. Like, it's literally just stats. I don't hardly watch any games. I just review the stats. Right. <laughs> um, so, Aldridge left the Blazers to win a championship and go with the winning program yep. and everything else yep. with San Antonio and work with Greg Popovich and Tony and Parker. Look, and let's not forget to be closer to his mom. To be close, yeah. To be closer to family, he's from Texas. I I get that, but uh, he went he went there to win. Well, the very next year, San Antonio made it one day more in the playoffs than the Blazers did. <laughs> and this year, the Blazers were higher seeded. Oh, absolutely. In the playoffs, so yeah, what goes around comes around, man. Uh, yeah, sorry, That's all I'm gonna say. Whatever. I'm sure he doesn't regret it. I mean, like to be, I don't know. Blazers got some special. If fans, I could go to San Antonio and make eighty million dollars a year or eighty million dollars on a contract, I totally would too. Well, you're in luck because I'm only six four and I'm white. <laughs> That's my biggest problem. Well, look, the NBA is in desperate need of more white ball players. So. Yeah. Problem is you're a little short, so you're gonna have to get real zippy. See, I'm six four, so I can play in the post with like my friends. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a real good ball player around here. That's Jeff. right. Yeah, brag about that. That's right. I can't even go to the three when on the, three tournament at the Moda Center. I was gonna, <laughs> look, when the Salem minor leagues call, you're gonna answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You can go play some hoopla. Yeah, uh, we, yeah. We need a power forward. I can't dribble. Look, yeah. no, can't take it in the paint. But if I've got a straight line, I can lay it in. I'm a pretty good pull-up jump shooter. I can make a free throw. Anything with the left hand, though, I'm screwed. And so. I can back someone into the post that's five nine or fewer. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, yeah. oh, there go all the viewers. So sorry. <laughs> back on topic here. Yeah, actually. <laughs> All right, back to tech news. Uh, Oculus Go uh, is now up for order on Amazon.com. This is great. Um, I think it's pretty good. Um, I got to say, I'm still disappointed with the Oculus Go headset. Right. Um, it's, it's probably a better experience than the phone VR. But for them to call this true VR, true standalone VR... There, there's the quote right there. Yeah, I think standalone VR is the standalone VR. It's I'll the buy. key word. Yeah, I'll buy. True standalone VR, I do not. Yeah, and the reason being, um, I'm going to get into specs and I'm going to get into experience. And with VR, 
experience matters more than specs. Um, Spec-wise, it's actually a pretty decent resolution screen. I think it's 1600 uh, per eye. Um, and so you've got pretty good resolution, but it's an LCD screen. Now they claim the LCD screen is just as fast as OLED. I highly doubt it. Didn't the slow-mo guys on YouTube do a video about LED versus OLED? They did. Right. There is a big difference. There is. And, and when you're putting a, a display two inches in front of your face, um, that difference is discernible oh, to yeah. the average person in, in, in VR. Um, I've, I've had the opportunity to play on multiple VR headsets, uh, Windows Mixed Reality, Oculus, and HTC Vive, plus the HTC Vive Pro. The HTC and Oculus are light years in front of the other headsets as far as the quality of the no motion blur goes. Um, because as you're turning your head, motion blur is a thing that breaks your immersion. It breaks right, your absolutely, experience. Absolutely. Um, and so the crisper you can get that image and the faster you can refresh those pixels, the better your experience is going to be. Um, so the other thing that this does not do is this does not track you in 3D space. This is not um, positional based tracking. This is rotation based tracking, which takes us all the way back to 2012 with the Oculus DK1 where you could put a headset on and then you could rotate your head. But the second you made a movement like this, it had no idea what to do. Or you lean <laughs> forward or you take a step. So basically your head is fixed in this one position. And as long as you're here, you're fine. And it's a pretty fun experience. Right. So if I'm in like a racing simulator and I'm sitting in a cockpit, I'm going, oh, this is awesome. But then I lean my head out the window yeah. and I lose the plot entirely. It actually makes me physically ill when yeah. that happens because you're doing something to your brain that your eyes do not see. Right. And your brain knows that. And it can't compensate for that. You know... That and there's no one-to-one -one hand tracking in this either. And that's another key feature of VR. And then, if, see, and then just looking at the pictures that are on the screen here for this, um, and it says, fourth bullet, bullet point down, integrated spatial audio. Speakers built into the headset, transporting mm -hmm. you straight into VR, making the headset easy mm -hmm. to share. I'm looking at the pictures <laughs> here. Now, first of all, now, is this supposed to be... I guess I didn't understand the point. Is this like a... This is basically... Like this, a mobile setup? It's a mobile setup. It's standalone. There's a, there's a computer built into that. It's a Snapdragon 821, I want to say. Okay. So it's a couple-year-old Snapdragon processor. It's not the new 845. Right. Um, but it's still decent enough. It's a decent... Um, so, like, are we talking cables with this thing? No like, cables. This okay, is okay. the unit. Okay. So, why did, was audio the way to go with it? Like, that feels like a huge race of waste resources. Well, there's speakers built into the headset. They're behind the straps right here. Um, but there's no earbuds. And from what I've heard right. is the audio is okay, but it's not good. Right. Like, why waste the resources <laughs> on okay audio? Like, that's right. going to... That's more now, battery drain. Now, you can plug headphones into this, but sure. why are you plugging wires into a standalone VR headset? Right. Um, but it was a cost-saving measure to not build in earphones to the headset itself. Oh. To make it heavier, to make it... So I'm sure they had some really great think tank, really right. dive into the cost analysis ratio, whatever bull crap of right. this. But it just seems like so... I don't know, not uh, go is, to me. This is not real VR. Right. Um, if you're interested in real VR, VR and you want to get into real VR and you don't have the computer and you don't have the headset, I actually have a build coming out in a couple weeks where I'm going to do a full true VR PC build for $800 that includes the headset. Oh, hell yeah. So stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in actual VR experience. Right, right. I'm going to play Skyrim on a $600 or less PC with a $200 headset. Good choice. Okay. Tune in. That, that is my video that I'm working on currently. Get the video early on so, Patreon? Is that one you can deliver That on? one's probably not. Oh, bummer. Um, I'm so sorry. I'm the yeah. king of making promises Jeff can't deliver. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is a video coming out uh, on Saturday. That one's not going to be out early. And the next one's not going to be out early. The, the third video from now is going to be out early. Look. But you can still chat with me on Discord, which is worth it. Sometimes they're early. Yeah, sometimes they're early. Flip a coin. One in four. I, I would say I get a couple days Flip later. one in four coins. Yeah. So, but anyway, for Oculus to call this true VR, it's uh, I think is, is watering down the platform. True is one of those words <laughs> uh, like 
all natural, right? Mm. Which legally means whatever the producer wants it to mean, right? right? All natural. It can literally be all synthetic chemicals. Yep. And it can still be all natural legally in the yep. U.S. So true feels kind of like one of those words to me. Yeah, exactly. When I hear true, I hear uncompromising. Right. And uh, yeah, $800 witchcraft. Exactly. And I can play StarCraft in VR oh, for $800. Shoot. You know Face Crusher is going to be waiting for that video That's now. right. I am not a lawyer. Don't quote <laughs> me on the price. But I put this PC together with brand new parts for $600 and the headset was $200. We might have to break a couple everything, warranty stickers. Everything in it was brand new. <laughs> Every single part was brand new. Nice. 800 bucks Gets you playing Sky, uh, Skyrim in VR. Which, if you haven't played any of those games in VR yet... Oh my god! Just listening to Jeff talk about Fallout 4 in VR... Oh. Like, I reconsidered all of my life choices that led me to be a poor pauper. Fallout 4 <laughs> is one of the most amazing experiences. And again, I'm, I'm going to come back to specs versus experience. Experience is everything. Uh, believing you're in a location is everything. Right. Um, I remember when I was probably eight years old um, playing the original Thief. Do you remember that game? Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Thief... 1996. Six-ish, yeah. Um, so, actually, I was 10. Um, but playing Thief um, on my PC on a 800 by 600 CRT. Um, but uh, had the headphones in and everything else, and it's like 2 in the morning, and I'm not supposed to be awake, and I'm worried my parents are going to come find me, and that kind of... So, I'm, I'm doing that kind of PC gaming, okay? Right. So, and I'm playing Thief, and Thief had a very interesting mechanic that they introduced in the game, which was smart AI, where for the day, this was mind-blowing, where it wasn't you shoot a guard and that guard now knows you're there, the guard can hear you, the guard can see you, it had actual vision-based um, uh, to, to the AI itself, so they had a, a, a vision path they could see, Absolutely. they had shadows that you could play with. Um, also, if they saw something, they would get increasingly more suspicious. Yep. <coughs> and what they would do is they would go, let's say I shot an arrow and I missed, okay, and it clanks off the wall. That guard now knows, yeah, Thief Dark Project 1998, okay, so I was about 12. Okay, so oh, I, was, I was off by four years. First you, were, first you were an infant, then you were a... Um... <laughs> Back when I was a wee little lad, eating Lucky Charm. No, no, yeah. wait. We already, yeah. we already did this. Better. Um, so, so it, let's say I clank an arrow off a wall and I miss a guard. That guard now knows that someone shot an arrow at him. He would never ever stop looking for you. Right. It wasn't like like Skyrim where I shoot a guy between the eyes and he doesn't die and he goes, yeah. "Who's there? Hey, what? Huh? Must have been the wind." And he puts and he, and he's walking around with the arrow in his head. <laughs> no, they would constantly keep looking for you. And one guard would walk over and he'd quickly look. And if he couldn't find you, he would run and go get help and bring back four guards with him. Right. Okay. See, now this is where modern gaming goes wrong. They right. got it wrong for the next 10 years. <laughs> right. 1996 was 22 years ago. Oh, my God. Just don't. Just don't. <laughs> so, so they would bring back four guards, and those four guards are now walking around with torches, lighting up the dark areas that you'd be hiding in, looking for you. What? John Day, shush. No. Anyways, back on track. Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> So I remember sitting out in the in the living room where our PC was playing this game at like two in the morning, worrying about waking my parents up, wearing the headphones. Like I can't hear anything outside because, but and now if they sing up behind me, I'm not going to know. But I'm playing this game and I've got these four guards looking for me, and I remember being so terrified that they're going to find me, and and I can hear them walking around me. And when you talk about experience, that's the experience in gaming that I go back to where I wasn't a kid, 12 years old, sitting playing a game. I was there. I was Garrett hiding in the shadows with four guards knowingly walking around wanting to kill me. You know, though, that not that a product, though, <coughs> just like nostalgia in general? Oh, it totally Because is. I do this, too, where I'm just like, modern games can't compare. And, of course, um, when you're talking Morrowind, like, Morrowind is the best Elder Scrolls, so, like... Right. That one, just take it out of the loop. But yep. other games, I always hold up to this pedestal, and then I go back, and yes, they are great, and they're amazing, and there's everything that I wanted right. them to be, but they aren't necessarily, like, what I built them up to. But, but I will say, 
Sky or uh, not Skyrim, but Fallout Four lives up to those expectations that my 12 year old self had of what vr yeah. could be yes where okay I, okay where i am in that game i am that character i am raising my rifle up looking through a scope and taking a shot nothing in that game is immersion breaking see one of the the story that sold me <laughs> if you don't mind me taking yeah. a wheel yeah, go for jeff it. was talking about it one day he's playing fallout 4 vr and he said he he became aware that he was being attacked from behind so he had his gun out. He pointed it behind him and shot a bunch. And then he turned around and he had shot and killed whatever it was that was dead, attacking There was a dead mole rat at my feet. I, I heard something coming from behind me. And so instinctively, I just had my pistol in my hand and I went, crack! And I turned around and I had headshotted a mole rat behind yes. me. And that was like... <laughs> I love this game. Just give up real life. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I am no longer playing a game. I am walking through the Boston Wastelands. And it was... It's called the Commonwealth? Com no, the DC was the Commonwealth. No. Wasn't DC it? was the Capital Wastelands. Capital Wastelands. The Boston was That's the Commonwealth. Right. Sorry. Sorry. Where they hardly experienced the, uh, Sorry, the I horrors hit of the Wasteland because of the technology from the Institute. Sorry, I hit my head recently. <laughs> Oh, well, in that case, I'm so sorry that I was harsh on you. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> no, sir. I'm just obsessed with, like, yeah. with Fallout, the lore and Fallout and Elder Scrolls. Mm. So it's, like, the only thing. You can ask me about anything else and I don't know it. Yeah. So, but if there's ever Jeopardy categories about Fallout and or Elder Scrolls, I'm your man. Uh, someone says, my my beef with Fallout 3 and 4 is how they dumb down the system. And I agree with that to a certain extent. Yeah, so... <laughs> Uh, Fallout 3, they didn't dumb it down. And in fact, Fallout New Vegas, they took it up a notch from yeah, where Fallout absolutely. 3 was. Fallout 4 is not a great Fallout game, but it's a great game in its own right. Absolutely. And this is a conversation I have all the time. Uh, where, with all his friends who think Fallout 4 sucks. Well, okay, yeah. So I have a friend, I do a podcast with him about Elder Scrolls lore. And uh, he is obsessed with the Fallout games. And Fallout 3 was his introduction to the series as it was mine. And after I played yes. Fallout 3, I didn't have a computer that could run it at the time because I'm poor. So I went and thought, you know what the next best thing is? Fallout 1 and 2. That's right. And I wasn't wrong. Yeah. And in fact, next best thing is like, it's such a tragedy to say. No, Fallout 1 and 2 are just as good as Fallout 3. Yes. They're just isometric. They're isometric top down. Right. Rather than, than like, the Like, oh experience. my god. Like, I've, I've literally played Fallout 1. And even though, like, I think Fallout 2 is overall way better, I remember thinking the whole time, I was like, this is Fallout 3. It right. literally, it's turn-based, isometric, yep. RPG strategy. Yep, exactly. Um, um, Steve brings up a great point. El Polo Diablo, who will be on the show here in a couple weeks. Uh, Fallout 4 was dumbed down, but the VR experience is good. And I liked Fallout 4. It wasn't a great Fallout game. Yeah, Steve. But it's it's fun gameplay. It's a it's a good RPG first person shooter. As far as a Fallout game, it is dumbed down See, because you don't rely as much on the perks or your intelligence or the the dialogue choices aren't there. The, right. So the, the morality isn't there. The number one thing I always hear is that the the RP elements are missing. Yeah. The RP elements that were there for two and three and New Vegas, which arguably is one of the best Fallout iterations. There, there's a there's a great uh, um, webcomic that I saw one time that breaks it down. Because basically, any dialogue choice, you have like four choices. Yeah. And one of them was, the, the down arrow was, let's talk about something else. Yeah. So if someone asks you a question, hey, we should go and beat those raiders or something like that. Let's talk about something the, the else. The down arrow was, let's talk about something else. The left arrow was sarcastic, yes. The right arrow was yes. And the up arrow was no. And in the parentheses, yes. <laughs> so you had no... Yeah. Right and, and I wrong, will say, good versus evil. Even the voice acting, I thought, was like... Right? Wasn't there voice acting in Fallout 4? Oh, yeah. It's been a couple months. Yeah. Um, it, it detracted a lot from the role-playing aspects, which mm -hmm. a lot of people have come to expect from yeah. uh, Bethesda and Black Isle mm -hmm. games. Um, and I honestly thought that was the only thing that really detracted from it. But I remember listening into a couple conversations where people... This is the one thing where I was just like, I'm not these people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Which, sorry if you are this person. Oh, boy. Uh, there's things coming out of my nose, and I don't have a brain tumor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag tumor humor. Thank you so much. Uh, 
Thank you so much for saving me with the hashtag. Okay, right. Otherwise, I'm just a jerk. That's right. Uh, so what, the quest line in Fallout Simone 4... Simone is so offended. <laughs> the quest line in Fallout 4 that really, I think, separated my mindset on the game quality was a bunch of people were complaining about... And forgive me if you guys aren't there yet, but the game's been out for a long time, but there's a side mission where you're walking through Boston, and all of a sudden you find this gigantic wooden boat up in these buildings. Oh, yeah. And these robots are like, hey there! Oh, you're a general from the army and all this garbage. And you help them get the parts necessary and fight and off. And you beat up the scavengers. Yeah, you beat up the yeah. scavengers and you do all this stuff. And then ultimate, and then the captain of the boat goes, Cheerio, we're off. You helped us do this. Thanks to you, we can fly away and complete our mission. And the ship launches into the air in this amazing triumphant thing and then crashes like 400 yards away. And it's like, we'll make it in another 400 years. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny. And it's great. And it was one of my favorite side mission arcs yet people crapped on them they're like i thought i was going to be able to pilot a flying ship around the commonwealth and it's like what about gaming in the modern age gave you that idea yeah like i'm so sorry that you're that like separated from the realities of like what triple a gaming is yeah but the yeah, I, I have to stop because I'm getting really worked up. All of a sudden, like about a thousand topics went through my mind. The least of which was No Man's Sky, which a bunch of people hated. But how on God's green earth did you ever think there's a video of the freaking creator of the game being like, "No, it is not multiplayer," and then people are like, "It's not multiplayer like advertised." Yeah, well, number one, not a lot of people watched the development of it. They just saw Sony whore the crap out of that I game. Know. Um, and, uh, and here's the problem when you go from indie developer to AAA creator. Yep. Um, no Man's Sky. No Man's Sky. <laughs> Package it up. Look no further. Um, uh, Sean, whatever his name is. I forget his, uh, his last yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. But it is Sean. Good Wright, for you. Right, whatever. Sean. Sean Wright, I think. Uh, Sean something. Uh, anyway, Sean. The, the most hated man in gaming. Oh, pretty much, dude. Um, like, I'm surprised he hasn't... He had himself. so many visions for this game. And his biggest problem was he told you what his visions were. And then yeah, he... He's not a AAA developer. <laughs> and then he showed a bunch of demos and we're like, Oh my god, that looks amazing. The, the universe is procedurally generated. Like, every time I play, it's going to be procedural. No, no, no. We procedurally generated it and then put it in the game. So every time I play it, it's procedural. No, no, no. I and, mean, yes and, and no, but... Right. And then no one can get past that. And you'll be able to see markers that are left by players. Oh, it's multiplayer. No, no, no. If someone's been to that planet, you'll see the markers that they left there because they've been there before. Oh, so it's multiplayer. No, no, no. Oh, God. I, and, they couldn't get off that. And then they're, they're given all this money from Sony, and then Sony markets the crap out of it, saying it's this multiplayer procedural universe game. See, the best way to view this game... So sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. The best way to view the game is the way that I viewed it. And I'm not saying that I'm some genius who can see through marketing schemes or any of this stuff. <laughs> I pre-ordered it. Dude, I did too. Mm -hmm. And I still love the game. Sometimes I play it and I'm like, this is amazing. It delivers mm -hmm. on everything. And if you thought that it was anything more, I'm so sorry. But all you had to do was open your eyes. Yep. And, it, uh, shit, where was I going with this? Uh, <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll pick up. <laughs> Okay, um, so anyway, Sony just hoard the heck out of this game and, and, and marketed things that, that the, the people wanted to hear. Oh, it's multiplayer. Oh, it's this. Exactly. Right. And, and it, and they couldn't deliver and then they rushed the timeline on it. And so oh, yeah. No Man's Sky couldn't deliver on the content that Sony wanted them to, that yep. the fans wanted. And they yep. go, look, this is the, this is like an alpha game that we have. No, no, no. You got to publish it. All right. 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 So now, if you've played the game like in the last two months, it's amazingly different. And there's actually story progression, and there's base building, and there and there's a oh, whole there's thing. a lot of fun stuff. There's a ton of things that they've added to the game, and it's actually worth a playthrough. It's still not worth sixty dollars. It's probably worth thirty. No, but you can beat but the it game. Is worth buying the game. You can beat the game very quickly if that's what you're into. Right. And you are. Right. Not all of you, but. <laughs> there's one of you right right the, what I was going to say was the way that I viewed the game the entire time was that it was a it was a study in procedural generation 
I remember reading an interview with the creator of... Uh, I don't have any of my hard copies. Sorry, the, the chat's oh, going bummer. crazy about that. They went, oh, I have StarCraft. Oh, I have this. Oh, I have a copy of Windows NT4. Oh, son, have you guys played uh, StarCraft Remastered yet? Yes. What up? Yes. Let's hop online and start balling. Are we going to start a craft computing StarCraft League now? We might have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, No Man's Sky, I just viewed it as like... A, because he said it's like, oh, yeah... The game started as a original bet. StarCraft was nineteen nine late was I think December ninety seven or February ninety eight. It was somewhere in that time frame. <coughs> and then StarCraft sixty four was uh, just kidding. But we it was a great. We iteration. don't talk about that. It was a great iteration. We don't talk about that. It was great. We don't talk about that. <laughs> That's where I got my start on StarCraft. <laughs> I'm ashamed to admit, but it had wow. it had some really fun. Um, like mod play, you know, like you could play f the football mod mm -hmm. on it and all that sort of stuff. Mm. It was a lot of fun. I do remember playing the hell out of the football. Oh, game. it was so fun. <laughs> and it was on N64. Score! Oh, man. Anyway, No Man's Sky, it was an exercise in procedural generation. Someone said, he was like, I can make a universe with this many quadrillion planets. And they're like, no, you can't. He's like, you're right. I can do eight quadrillion planets. And then he made No Man's <laughs> Sky, which theoretically has eight quadrillion planets. There you go. Yep. And that's all you needed out of it. I mean, you saw the trailers, and yeah, there was some amazing stuff in it, but... Yeah. Like, haven't you guys been disappointed enough by franchises like Fable, where you follow the development from start to finish, and he says all of these things, and then you get the game, and it's nothing like what was promised? If you say one word about Star Citizen, I'm going to punch you in the nose right no, now. No, I would okay. never dream, because I'm not an <laughs> idiot who expects so much out of games. I'm sorry, I've been disappointed. <laughs> Absolutely, man. <laughs> I freaking crowd... I kickstarted Star Citizen. Yeah, so did I. I, I am a backer <laughs> on Star Citizen. Who is... I've like, been for years. And if you have been, you're used to disappointment and channeling your expectations in such a way that you don't look like a total jackass at the end of the day. Okay, great progression here. Sorry. Um, I... <laughs> Uh, I've got StarCraft, I've got Morrowind, I've got uh, Windows NT4, Age of Empires Rise of Rome, uh, yada yada yada. I've got a jar of dirt! <laughs> <laughs> well played, sir. Thank you. Well played. Hats off to you. Um, anyway, yep. Uh, as Skull Foss says, Craft mm -hmm. Computing Remastered League, it's happening. I'll, I'll head this one if I must. If you, if you, yeah, go for it. <laughs> totally go for it. By the way, we also have a subreddit now. Oh. Uh, r slash craft computing. Nice. So, Tell your friends. We, we, are, we are on Reddit. Um, I will poke in there from time to time. Uh, I am not. Mo I am a moderator on there, but I am not moderating the sub. Um, right. I, I'm leaving that to other people. I've, I've given instructions on how I want it to be presented, but to comply with Reddit's no self-promotion rules... I, I am there, but I am not active in the good, good. moderation and, and administration of the subreddit. So, Oh, really, Reverend? You hear StarCraft64? Come on. And started laughing? Yes. Come on. Yes, you did, Reverend. Come on. Yes, you did. Come on. Come on. Good job, Reverend. It was way more easily playable I've... for a young console oh, boy like no, me. Oh, hell no, it was not. A young console boy like me. Dude. Dude, you are not going to get me in an RTS game to say... Yeah, back then you didn't have 16 mouse buttons. I had four. <laughs> and you know what? Back then, back then I had 30 macros on a second keyboard. Oh, God. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm just saying the Koreans turned me off of RTSs. Ooh. I know. How terrible is that? But I can't beat 120 actions per minute, okay? But I can beat you in StarCraft 64. Because no one plays it. I'm the best. <laughs> Challenge accepted, <laughs> friends. I'll meet you online on StarCraft 64. <laughs> oh my god, we someone, should start someone... a StarCraft League where you can only use a 64 copied uh, USB controller. Ooh, That's all you can use. Uh, someone just won. Don't have the original media, but still have a copy of my old 8088's DOS 2.11 and Deskmate software. You have passed me, sir. Actually, maybe not, because I think I have a copy of DOS 2.0. Dude, yeah. <laughs> um, for a Toshiba Taskmate. Um, or something like that. I'm, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was a portable Toshiba with a 640 by 220 
um, LCD passive matrix black and white screen. So it was like a 220 character wide screen. Or no, it was 84 characters wide. Right. Yeah. So. Uh, John Day asks, what's wrong with the XCOM yeah. series for oh, RTS? Oh, oh, oh. Benjamin. All, Benjamin. I'm going to stop you there. Oh, boy. You have oh two boy. options when you join a game and are matched with a Korean in StarCraft 1 or 2. Quit or lose. Aha. Uh -huh. I was in a 2v2 match. Two Americans, two Koreans. My American counterpart was killed in three minutes. <laughs> I won the match. No. I won no. the match. That is the one I can hang on my wall. <laughs> I don't think they I were real Koreans. Match. Okay, they were North Koreans. That doesn't count. 2v2, American Korean. One went down, and I gave him this. Well, look. You're one of a kind, Jeff. That's right. You're one of a kind. But to John Day... That XCOM is, series, RTS. It's not an RTS. It's turned by a strategy. That is my claim to gaming fame. Don't take that away from me. I will never I take beat, that away from you. I, I went 2v1 against two Koreans, and I won. One match. I will never take that away from you, as long as you never take StarCraft 64 away from me. Oh, you can't do that, can take you? It. Take it. <laughs> take it. I'm done. StarCraft is dead to me. <laughs> StarCraft is dead to me. Uh, you know, honestly, though, I have played way more StarCraft on the PC than I have on the 64. It so. wasn't as bad as SimCity 2000 on the SNES. Uh, <laughs> dude, I played a lot of SimCity 2000 on the SNES. I'll counter you, Sim Earth on the SNES. <laughs> uh, this, oh, thank you all. Yep. Oh, we never got to this story. Yeah, uh, this was uh, another... This is a great one, actually. Yeah. Uh, Disney unveils a prototype virtual reality jacket, so a haptic feedback jacket specifically built for virtual reality. This is great. It can simulate hugs, punches, and a snake slithering across your body. I'd rather not do that last one. Yeah. A big screen snake slithers up your body, squeezing your ribcage, but you're not afraid. It's strangely exhilarating. Why would you not be afraid? Um, I'd be terrified. Um, I have been freaked out in VR before. Uh... I have. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is really, really cool because this is the kind of crap that the, uh, that the high-end players are working on right now, um, that you may be able to go to an ar a VR arcade and try on and you try on the vest and all of a sudden I've been shot or I've been punched or, or someone's grabbing my arm or something right. and, and it's all virtual and right. it's in real time and Yeah. Right. See, Disney's unveiling this. Meanwhile, Pornhub is unveiling the other one. Yeah. They, they have another <laughs> attachment. Another accessory motorized. <laughs> that is horrible. I can't believe I said that. But accurate. Um, Quoting Archer, is there a... <laughs> in the sink? Um, somebody said about Alpha, Alpha Centauri. Um, Alpha Centauri is great. Go play some Masters of Orion 2. Ooh. Easily yes. the best 4X strategy game, in yep. my opinion. Yep. And now they just released Master of Orion <coughs> like a year ago. It does live up. Not as good as Masters of Orion 2. But yep. anyways. Uh, Sim Ant on SNES. Let's just say Maxis just screwed up on the SNES. <laughs> Let's just say that straight out. There's not a good Maxis game on the SNES. <laughs> No pants to avoid the virtual groping lawsuits. With hugs and punches, they can make the perfect virtual reality wife. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Come on, Ellen. Oh, man. But anyway, Steve hit it on the, the nail on the head there. Haptic feedback cup. <laughs> it's the one place I don't want haptic feedback in virtual reality. Well... <laughs> At least, I'm just joking. <laughs> my VR setup is on the other side of this room. It's not the best place to use it. Right, right. I yeah. see it with the window open. You don't have much privacy. Yeah, it's, oof. Yeah. Plus, I mean, all the cameras all around. I mean, you're just asking for trouble. Yep. Yep. I mean, I got this big screen, and I can't use it for what I want to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, look. Sooner or later, we'll upgrade from uh, L cars to an actual... Uh, an actual... Uh, <laughs> been two hours careful guys. i'm all careful. out of brain power here careful <laughs> i'm trying to say from l cars to uh you know the room 
Clearly, I love you Star Trek. Me. You lost me. <laughs> you know, Holodeck? Holodeck. There you go. <laughs> Clearly, Star Trek is my favorite thing that's so ever been made. the thing with the photons and the matter creation. I, and the... Somebody brought up earlier about how we haven't touched on Star Trek yet, and it was like a record for the show. And uh, No, actually, last week we were two hours and six minutes in, and we hadn't talked on it yet, and so we gave it like one sentence, and then we were out. Oh, well, then let that be. Let me forgetting <laughs> what the holodeck is called be our one sentence. Yep. <laughs> so we are two hours in on the button, and Star Trek has come up once now. So we got to start a trend here. We have fulfilled our quota. <laughs> Honestly, like Monday, I was really worried we weren't going to have enough to talk about. And then Tuesday, all these news stories dropped. I know. I was reading the news this morning just to be like, well, okay, I got to make sure that we got some stuff to talk about. Yeah. Of course, I saw all your links and they're like one by one all trending. And then there's a bunch more stuff. I was like. It, yeah, there were a bunch of stuff that came out today that yeah. I didn't get to put in here. There was a couple things. I didn't yeah. get a chance to fully read them and know what I was talking about. So, yeah. Love me some Dorn. Yes. The Book of Dull Dorn. Good old DS9 fan. Oh, yes. Dorn, yes. the barfly. There you go. Good yes. on you. For some reason, I was going Dungeons and Dragons, but that's yeah. okay. Uh, still play Star Trek Online? Hey, good on you. You're a real trooper, Benjamin. Hamm. No, no, no. The one below. Voyager Elite Force 1 and 2. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Old school. My favorite Star Trek games ever, maybe with the exception of Starfleet Command. I haven't played Starfleet Command. It was good because you could actually control four ships uh, all at the same time. See, I always played Nexus back in the day and pretended that I was playing Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. Because that was like the game. Yep. For space combat. For space fleet combat. Yeah, Bridge Commander is not that bad, Benjamin Hale, so... I'm glad you used the word wasn't in yeah. front of awful. I, I liked Bridge Command. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. Uh, ooh, wow. Drinking Trip in the Woods and watching Talking Heads. Hey, good on you, Skull. Good on you, Skull. How's that Trip in the Woods treating you? Oh, that looks delicious. Yeah, it looks like a Trip in the Woods. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure he answers your question down the line here. How, how is it? Super, Super tasty. tasty. <laughs> you guys should definitely review it. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. He, he's helping us out here a little bit. That's right. It's not as heavy, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. You're not a lawyer. Accurate. That's an accurate statement. That's right. Uh, <laughs> he didn't say that. I'm I so liked sorry. Armada. Armada wasn't bad. Uh, Star Trek Armada was like the first one that I ever played. And so it has like a place in my like nostalgia center right. where I'm like, yeah, okay. What was the one that was kind of the RTS where you're building bases on planets? Oh, yeah. Um <sighs> Oh, boy. Did I tell you guys I was hit in the head recently? <laughs> because I'm my show. No, no, that was me. Oh, that was, that was Armada. Was that Armada? Armada was an RTS. No, I'm thinking of one where you actually built bases on planets. Maybe that was the original Armada. Right. And it, was it like the grid-based one? <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe I'm confusing them. Maybe. Best and worst Star Trek video games on Metacritic. Here let's, we go. Let's check it out. Oh, Legacy wasn't bad either for the Xbox. Uh, I never played Legacy. Legacy was actually pretty solid. Uh, it... it it had all of the captains voicing the captains. Oh, great. And so you had genuine voiceover on there. Nice. That's all um, you need. But uh, no, it was pretty good. Elite um, Force got an 86? Yeah. Heck yeah. It, it's the, the highest rated Star Trek game on Metacritic is, is Elite Force 1 with an 86. Followed by Bridge Commander. Followed by Deep Space Nine The Fallen. Really? Where's Dominion War on this? Is that? I don't see Not it. Not on here. <laughs> oh, here it is. Not listed. Yeah. Tactical Starship Simulation, the Kobayashi Alternative. I, oh my gosh, yes. Uh, uh, the Promethean Prophecy, I played that one as well. Some of these I don't really recognize. Let's see, all the ones that got failing scores. Uh, Klingon Academy, yeah. Armada 2, Away Team, oh, well, Deep Space Nine Dominion Wars, there it is. Oh. 64. That was an interesting game, I will say. Uh, Conquest Online. I don't remember that one. In 2000. One. That's an interesting... I might have to look that one up. Elite Force Expansion Pack got a 62. Oof. Uh, Star Trek Legacy, they didn't like. Got a 54. Uh, Star Trek New Worlds. Oh, New Worlds might have been what it was. Yeah. I've it, never it, played this one. It was an atmosphere-based Star Trek game where it, it was kind of like a StarCraft knockoff. Yeah, Star, 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 Trek, Star Trek New Worlds. That's See, right. Star Trek is one IP that can benefit from some serious game making. Stories. Yes. 
Like Star and Wars it got never it locked really down. Has. No, it hasn't. Well, you say Star Wars has, but not in the last ten years. It hasn't. Uh, I mean, think back ten years. Okay, let's see. It's twenty eighteen. I mean, okay. Because you're going, oh, Battlefront. Oh, wait, that was 2004. Battlefront 2. Oh, but what about the current Battlefront? It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that good either. I mean, it was just as good as Battlefront, the original. I, I will say, just no, because, no, because the original Battlefront had an amazing single-player campaign. Yeah. Where I could replay it for days on end. Yeah, but you could race speeder bikes in single-player through the forest moon of Endor on this one, Jeff. The graphics were gorgeous. Yeah, but you only had four maps. That's accurate. That's accurate. In the whole game, you no, had four dice, maps. Dice screwed us. Dice screwed us. But I still have like 60 hours in the game. Yeah. Um, and, and then uh, Battlefront 2 was just a hot mess. Uh, Battlefront no. 2 was the game that could have been the Oh, game. you mean the original Battlefront 2? No, the new Battlefront 2. Oh, yeah. It could have been. all of the potential yeah. to EI, be EI the be-all, themselves. end-all game. And EA decided to do the cash grab instead of let DICE do what they wanted. And DICE, to their credit, still made a good game out of a pile of crap that EA was trying to make of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you're right. So, when I'm thinking Star Wars uh, games, my mind automatically goes to Jedi Academy, Outcast, KOTOR 1 and 2. Yes. Not... Star Wars The Old Republic, which I do not care for your half-assed attempts <laughs> at grabbing monthly subscription fees. Nope. I'm so sorry. I don't. I nope. don't care about it. Nope. Um, and uh, Escal uh, recently, or just brought up in the chat, Pod Racer. Yeah, Star I know. Star we were Wars talking about this on Twitter S earlier. Star Wars Episode 1 Racer was released by GOG Games yesterday. No DRM, friends. DRM Still free. Buy Go buy it. It's nine bucks. And I played the hell out of it, and I beat the game yesterday. Uh, I just hooked up my 64 recently and was playing the original. Yeah. It still holds up. That that has been what I've had to play for years is the ROM that I have on my computer for it. And uh, and it still holds up. It still plays well. Yeah. But the PC version was a better overall experience. Um, it, it was better graphics. And, and through modern tweaks, you can get into... Uh, uh, I, I went into NVIDIA control panel in application settings and I turned up anti-aliasing to max and AF to max because remember the minimum requirements on this game was a Pentium 1 166 with 2 megabytes of video memory. Yep. It'll play on anything. So if you have a computer that was built since 1999. You can go get yourself a Raspberry Pi. And play yourself some. You probably can't do that because I don't know. If, actually, it may run. That might be a good experiment. I is think will, it will is absolutely will episode run. Run, run. I think run a Raspberry Pi three would run it. Like absolutely. I've got one. I, I might try that. Go for it. I got one too. Maybe I'll do the same. That might be a fun video. And then we'll have to figure out how to uh, totally hack the game and create a, this new multiplayer mod for it. It does do multiplayer over LAN. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That is so great. Yeah. Uh, one of the ideas I had for today's video was to actually have you and I play pod racing over LAN on a split screen here so we can see the camera feed and then each of us have our own screen. I couldn't get it set up in time. Bummer. Next so, time, though. Next time. Or any time. Hey, Jeff, yeah. I will come over any time for that. Nice. <laughs> well, you can play it on this machine and I'll play it on this machine. And oh, we'll totally rock it. Let's do it. Let's do it. God, I love that game. I put so many hours into it. And I think that's a good place to end the show. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect Thank time. you all for watching episode 30 of Talking Heads. It has been great. I am feeling so much better. Thank you for your thoughts. But if you're thinking of me, move those thoughts over to Simone, who could really Absolutely. use it right now. Absolutely. Um, Simone, get better soon. Please. Please keep making shitty robots. The world is a better place because you are in it. So with that said, thank you all for watching. Um, I might go enjoy a scotch now. I got some monkey shoulder in the cabinet. Oh, perfect. Yeah. What a great scotch. We're going to go have some monkey shoulder. We'll see you next week. Have one on us. And if I can find my mouse, I can stop the stream. It's not real. It's fake.